that song freaking love that song yeah you, that's i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna I, you know what i'm gonna do was i'm gonna start my own radio station and i'm gonna no. play the music yeah that's right oh that's what i'm doing right now i'm, I'm gonna play the music i like drink in my all, hand and, and we'll all have to listen to it no you won't <laughs> oh I yeah will. so oh, so, you, so this is the music i played before we start we're live in the stream right now i believe i hope we are I, I beamed in on uh, scotch and soda. One scotch, one soda, one scotch, I, I, one bourbon, one beer. I, I, Classic. It was, it was. I know. It was very moving. I didn't. You know. It surprised me and uh, brought back memories and well, I inspired mean, me for the weekend. Wait a second. Are you saying that you do not like my set list? No. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> no, man. I did not say uh, that. People are going like, "What are you talking about?" Let's tell you. But before we start the show, I play. Um, a bunch of music, and right now I'm still out of breath because I was just jumping around to uh, drink in my hand. Uh huh. Gets me one jacked. Scotch, one, one bourbon, one beer. Yeah. Let's Who'd see who's here first. One this is uh, Amos Milburn. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Not the Kingston Trio. No, no, no. No, that's Scotch and Soda. Please, Mr. If you want to be correct on that, Listen that's the song called Scotch and Soda. Uh, Jimmy Mac, are you working? I'm working it. Let me hear you talking. How is everyone on Saturday? Do you like the, uh, out of this three uh, trio, scotch, bourbon, or beer? Jimmy uh, Mack. I probably like bourbon the best, but I probably drink beer the most. You like bourbon? Buzz, you don't drink bourbon, do you? I used to drink bourbon until I had three uh, sessions of alcohol poisoning. Oh. <laughs> and I stopped drinking bourbon. Wait a second. I was drinking Wild Turkey 101. We're going we're gonna, to we're start the show in a second, but hold on one second. I want to find something here real quick. It's you talk. Wait, hold on. This one, anyway, so before the show, I'm going to, anybody wants me to program, listen, they're firing radio people left and right. Everyone in radio is going without a job. That's a guaranteed fact. So the fact that we've come into this now is probably the best thing that's ever happened because... The, the radio guys, my radio brothers. Radio brothers, don't worry about it, man. There's a way out of it somehow. So, anyone wants me to program their station musically or buy this show, go ahead and have at it. Because that's the only way you're going to get it. I got to program a station. Because seriously, there's no music. Guy. I mean, people put their, their songs on Spotify and Pandora and wherever you can get our podcast. And they don't need a radio dude to program their music for them. But they need me. Because I can give them stuff they're never going to hear again. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> how, how about... Yes, you can. How about drinking you pretty? How about that one? That was great. Did you did, did you come in on that one, or when did you come in? No, I, I just... I'll give you just a second of this. Hey, everybody, yeah, we are live right now. Saturday, uh, I don't know what... Oh, it's May 2nd? Yeah. Good Lord. You need a cigarette, baby. You need a cigarette, baby. And a liquor drink over ice. I need a thumb size fatty. Thumb size fatty. Thumb size fatty. Nice. Would be nice. You know, tomorrow may bring a regretful sign. Right now I'm in love. Drinking you pretty. I hope you're drinking me pretty too. That's a good, you didn't hear that one then? No. It's a good no. one. It is a good one. So before we come on, we just uh, start playing the music. And so uh, coincidentally enough, it came in after we were replaying on the stream. By the way, sometimes the stream is going 24-7. Sometimes it's not. Depends on what we're doing with it, working on it. But uh, if you're listening to it live on the stream now, you can punch it in anytime. It might There might be something there that you find by accident. Yeah. That's fun. 
but it came in right after the show where uh, Lisa, Lisa B, was, we were listening to me call her drunk and trying to get her to go right. out with me. That, it stopped right there. The stream stopped. Then we went into the drinking set. How about boat drinks? Come on, boat drinks? Yep. Jimmy Buffett? Boat drinks? You got to be kidding me. This, everybody, I, I know we're all going crazy. I know you want to float in a boat. You want to have a drink. Watch me hit the post at JP Radio. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> all right, lady, you all right? I just want you to know that I miss you and I love you. Can't wait for the shit show to be over so that I can touch people, drink with people, and have the best life ever. I'll bet you that old lady's already dead. <laughs> shit show. It's the shit show. Jimmy Mac is working it while Johnny B is working it. Shit show. It's a shit show. No coronavirus allowed. Yeah, Jonathan Brandmeier Showcast. Hey, Johnny B. This is the new not normal. That's right, baby. It ain't normal. It ain't nothing normal about it because nobody knows what's going on. I know that uh, in my back. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know that in my... Oh, by the way, to the people of the world, uh, I my name is Jonathan Brandmeier. We are friendly aliens. We are friendly. Uh, Buzz is not so friendly, but Buzz Kilman <laughs> at his house is also an alien. But we want to welcome all of you to our show. It's not just about taking a trip down memory lane with you loons out there. We are all inclusive to the people out there, the aliens flying around in space or calling us at 833 833- Five JB Show. We're here for you. We want to talk to you. We're the ones that need help, not you. We do. <laughs> I got a producer now. That's the good news. Who's well, that? Uh, Mr. Salamanca from Breaking Bad. All right. <laughs> uh, don't, don't worry. I'm giving you a proper introduction. Mr. Salamanca, of course, is is now working with me when I tell him to get something. I know I don't order you, Mr. Salamanca. I just hold on a minute. I just tell you, I'm, I'm requesting if I ask you to get me something like coffee, will you? Okay. Um, yeah, I, don't, I need some coffee then, if we get a chance. F you too, Mr. Salamanca. <laughs> All right. All right. Mr. Salamanca, my producer, if you don't watch Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad, you won't know what I'm talking about. Especially you aliens. I don't even know if you guys get cable in space. But I'll tell you this, I hope you do. Because it's pretty cool out there right now, if you could get out. But I got a 5G phone mast in my backyard now. Someone just put that in. And I got oh, a chip yeah. in my head from Bill Gates. He put. I didn't realize until I went to a, uh, I went to a gynecologist because it was the only doctor open in my area. <laughs> right. And right. Uh, he said, you know, I'm noticing something in your skull. And I go, a brain? And he goes, nope, that's definitely not <laughs> it. He said, uh, you have a chip in your head. And it says it's got BG attached to it and Microsoft written on it from Bill Gates. So I have a chip in my head. Don't know what that means. Not on, at least it's not on your shoulder. That means you're a freaking alien, dude. And then, of course, the aliens just this week confirmed by the government. <laughs> okay. Yes, we have aliens that are flying around, here, and they actually put out a video. Wait, 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 one second. Wait one second. I just want to go to one thing that I said I was looking for because I remember you saying these words. Vodka is the alcohol that ripped my family apart. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, and there it was. In the, in the, uh, there was vodka. Vodka is the alcohol that ripped my family apart. Yeah, and I was asking you what you drank. Do you drink, uh, did you drink bourbon? Did you drink scotch? And then you said, what, tequila or bourbon? Next thing you know, you don't drink any vodka. I don't drink vodka, no. That's all I Because drink. it ripped my family apart. <laughs> Why would I drink? Vodka is the alcohol that ripped my family apart. I love that line. That's the greatest line. Oh, yeah, that's real funny, man. The guys and family get ripped apart, and you're laughing at it. What do you think about that, Mr. Salamanca shitbag? <laughs> <laughs> hey, ring that bell for me, bitch. All right. Turn me off. All right. Uh, turn me off. <laughs> <laughs> Billy the bed bug wants to be turned off. And you also said something about Billy the bed bug. You said that uh, kids are following him and they don't like him to swear. Now, I want to be clear on it because I don't want kids, parents, listening in their house because we know you're all in it together now. I don't want them to be angry with Billy the bedbug. So tell me what to do, Buzz, and I'll do it. 
Well, yeah, well, I, I, Hold wouldn't, on a minute. I wouldn't change anything. I mean, Billy the Bed Bug has got a following in the kids. One of the reasons I'm sure the kids love Billy is he's occasionally obscene and profane. Fucking the par- it's, it's the parents that are disturbed. Oh, yeah. Never mind about that, Dan. Okay. I'll try to back it down for you, Buzz, but not for that dipshit, <laughs> JB. He can kiss my ass. All right, Billy. And suddenly, everywhere I look and, and, and listen... I hear the the phrase shit show. I mean, it's all over television suddenly. I never heard it before I heard Lisa say it right. the other day. And that's right. And she's just loving every minute of it. <laughs> I'll bet. Yeah, I love it every... <laughs> yeah, look what I've done now. I've never been on your show. I never wanted to be, but now I'm the star. You suck crap. <laughs> so uh, I got a chip in my head, and uh, that's not good. Ronnie, might help, might help. Did you notice when Ronnie Wu was on, he was yelling, Ronnie Wu Han, Ronnie Wu Han. Did no, you notice I that? I did not. Pay attention, that. keep your ears open. Sometimes you might hear things that you don't want to hear. So go back to what you were just saying about the aliens, because I got to tell you something. Isn't the timing on that release of the aliens and space, just, isn't it a little weird? Isn't it? Why not? Well, Why not? Is it, is it weird that suddenly we have? <laughs> Proof of aliens from other worlds. Uh, I mean, yeah, it is weird, but not not a surprise. Yeah, I know. What I'm saying is, why now just release it since the video came out in like 1991? Now they're saying, government's like, yeah, you know what? We're all going to hell in a handbasket. Put that video out about the aliens. That'll get throw them off the <laughs> scent for a while. Isn't that what they're saying? Yes. Right? Yes, it is. It, it, yeah, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, Hey, anyone got, remember that video the Pentagon had with the UFOs taken by those Navy pilots? Can we get that out now? Why now? Take a look around. What do you mean, why now? Run them off the trail, pal. I love alien talk. It's the greatest. So they were cleared up to, they were released according to the Pentagon. They were released to clear up any misconceptions on whether they were real or not. Okay. I think they are real. Yep. Do you do you know? Be honest with me. Do you doubt that there's life outside? No, no. I never have though. No, I'm I mean outside my window right now because there's <laughs> a couple of guys staring in right now. Right? I've always believed that you know. I mean, we can't be the only ones here. We can't. No, that's, it's impossible. That's, that's uh, arrogant. Ridiculous. <laughs> and there's one guy who's talking about aliens. Uh, a comic is like, yeah, we're always searching for intelligent life, and they zip over Earth and they go, nah, let's move on. Nope. <laughs> right. Let's, especially now, the aliens are going, where's the intelligent life? And they look back down at what's going on here, and they go, I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm getting out. But I would do that, too. If I have, See, I have a stream, but I don't know what to do with it. And so I think maybe I should go and do a, maybe maybe at midnight I'll just pop on the stream. You can check it all out at brandmeyershow.com. And yeah, just, just do it. <laughs> Just whatever you feel like. It. Yes, <laughs> yes, like like, like yeah. mini shows. <laughs> yes, no, that's what I'm talking about. That's yeah. what I'm talking about, Buzz. I'm talking about just getting on and like doing a, a space <laughs> alien show. And I'll tell you, you remember that guy named Art Bell? Absolutely. Right, Art Bell was the great Art Bell. Uh, right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know a guy named Art Bell in radio, he was a guy that did a show in a trailer home in Pahrump, Nevada. Pahrump, Nevada. Pahrump, pahrump, pahrump. Yep. Pahrump. And, I mean, it's it's the creepiest thing ever, but he was awesome. This radio station has consciously decided not to spend money on a delay switch, not to conduct a careful background check of the people it places on the air, and to allow individuals to say almost anything they want in foreign languages without <laughs> having staff on duty who can even understand what they're saying. Right. <laughs> That's perfect. That's Art Bell. That's going to be our intro. Every time. Then I take calls. Uh, hello, this is, uh, I'll call myself, I, at one, I did one time uh, do a, a jack with a guy in the air pretending I was, um, you know, like a UFO guy like Art Bell, and I got him, I booked on the show, and then I called myself Dwayne Scaby. <laughs> and I just took calls, like, oh, I take calls, good morning, hello, this is Dwayne, go ahead, please. This is B7 slash 983. I'm a 14-year-old hitman for the Mafia. I was trained by the CIA, and I raised pigeons that carry bombs. It's very exciting. Very exciting. Is Art there? Art? Art? Oh, no. Who's listening to me? I gotta go. See? 
and all the people that listened to Art Bell were kind of out of their minds. Think about and you it. have to rethink Art Bell now that we know that there are aliens. Well, we don't. We just saw a plane. Mac, where's the plane with those guys? The reporting the 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 video of the. Stand by. Yeah, I want to see that. Was it's a little blob? It looks like a little uh, video game, and they released it. But doesn't it just seem weird, right? Well, about six months ago, they had a video of. You know, the same kind of thing. Yeah. It just happened. I mean, it was like six months ago. Okay. I mean, so so they've been sitting on it, waiting for the right moment to uh, promote it. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm saying. This is the right moment, huh? Let's get that out now. <laughs> you see what I mean? Where's the thought process? If anyone believes anything is normal, it's not normal that these guys have released this video now, the Pentagon. It didn't just come from, you know, a Breitbart or some crazy, I don't know where. It came from the Pentagon. Right explains, they say these are words of the Pentagon, unexplained aerial phenomena, previously leaked with some believing they show alien UFOs. The Pentagon said it released the footage to clear up <laughs> any misconceptions by the public. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, we have some misconceptions about the uh, UFOs. <laughs> right. We were wondering, I know everyone in the world, we got like a million deaths around here and people are dying, we can't go outside. So we're just thinking, you know, aliens. I'm wondering if that was real or not. Who's thinking about it? Who's got the misconceptions about the aliens. No, I'll tell no, you, one. no one. No one cares about the aliens no, right now. They don't care. Nobody. Listen, aliens, I'm asking you. Hello. Land right now and take me wherever you live. I do not care. Take me wherever the frick you live. Drop me off. I'm good to go. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the greatest thing in the world? I just get picked up right now. Yeah. Take it somewhere where you don't have to wear a mask. And I will do the show without you flying around in space. Have them guys stick their light bulbs up their butt. All right. Okay. Billy's, I think Billy's going the too dark. The kids love Billy. Yeah, I, I think they he's going. <laughs> but, but he's going too dark. I don't like him. Kiss my bitch ass. All right. Um, but, okay. So here is what they said. So these uh, Navy guys, it was released basically in 1997 or something like that. They released two of them. Oh, excuse me, 2004, 2015. They've been in the public, circulating around, but no, you know, from sites that nobody believes in. Since 2007, 2017, the aerial phenomena observed in the videos remain characterized as unidentified. The three videos show pilots during a training flight published by the New York Times in 2017. No one cared about it then. All of a sudden, now we're releasing it again. 2004 video shows uh, an incident that happened 100 miles out over the Pacific. Two Navy pilots found an oblong object hovering over the water then quickly flew away and accelerated like nothing I've ever seen, said one of the pilots. Hmm. Hmm. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Look at that thing, dude. That's not our LNS, though, is it? It's not. It is the LNS, dude. Well, if there's a like good thing, look at it. It's it. Doesn't look like anything to me. Anyway, so, um, that's what they saw in you. Everybody by now has probably seen it. I don't know how it's going to keep our brains off what else is going on here i mean we need an actual photo of the alien yeah right yeah yeah it's like a, okay right now at this point i would believe more in bigfoot <laughs> than i believe in whatever it is they got no i shouldn't say that because i do believe there's alien life there's no doubt about it i just don't know why they don't but wait a minute of course we know why they don't land buzz they don't want to live here now they were scouting so, it out maybe for some nice real estate now it's like right. oh i'm getting the hell out of here doesn't make sense now. Hmm. I see Buzz is scampering around in my brain. I can see him scampering around. I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing something. I can just always feel it when he's doing something. No, I'm not doing it. You're doing something. You're wondering about aliens. Dude, so, yeah, you're thinking about it. Yeah. I think about it. I mean, I've all, even as a little kid, I... I I would look out the window. I remember looking out the window and seeing people walk by the house 
and I would wonder if, <laughs> if okay. they were actually people or if they were aliens simply disguised as people. Yeah, you did not. I did. Why would you do that? Because, oh, because your vodka ripped your family apart. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That doesn't make any sense, I guess. But, but wait a minute, you guys... Well, you must have been watching. You must have been watching like Star Trek or something I, weird. Well, yeah, I, 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 I was, you know, concerned about alien abduction. Actually, really? Yes. Okay. And, and when I say a little kid, I mean like six or seven years old. Right. Right. Okay. Well, I don't know how I got there. I don't know what how I, how I arrived at that point, but I did. Well, I can tell you this: keep the stream on. Because I'm going to start doing a alien show. Buzz, do you want to do a show, a midnight I, I, show with I'd me? Li- you know, only if uh, we take uh, calls. Yeah, that's the only way. Because around <laughs> from the world, aliens. yeah, from aliens, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Hey, Mr. Salamanca, is there any way you could work midnight with me? Okay, go to hell. I don't need you. I, what do I need you for? This is craziness. All right, now, can we go out? Can we go in? Can we stay home? Can we go to a restaurant? Can we go bowling? Can we get a haircut? Can we do anything? Someone, Dr. Birch, please get in front of that mic and give us some straight answers. Yeah, I really don't understand why everybody isn't following the same rules right now. They're very clear. So let's take a minute and let's go over them again. First, you must not leave the house for any reason, unless of course you have a reason and then you may leave the house. All stores are closed except those that are open. And all stores must close unless, of course, they need to stay open. This virus is deadly, but don't be afraid of it. It can only kill people who are vulnerable and also those who are not vulnerable. We should stay <laughs> locked down until the virus stops Hold infecting on, people. And it will only stop infecting people if enough of us get infected that we build immunity. So it is very important that we get infected and also do not get infected. Yes. You should not go to the doctor's office or the hospital unless you have to go there. Unless, of course, you are too sick to go there. This virus has no effect on children except for those children in which it affects. Right. The virus remains okay. active on different circumstances. Surfaces okay. for two hours. Thank you. Or four hours. Right. Or, or six hours. But in most cases, it's days and not hours, and it needs a damp environment. Thank you. Cut it off. Cut it off. Yeah. I can tell you, everybody is now wearing a mask. Yeah, come on. I'm, I'm not going to, because I won't look good in one. They won't let you in the store. Want to bet? No. Do you know who I am? <laughs> Did you ever hear the line where the guy walks up? I forgot who the star was, one of these big-ass stars. He goes to a, tried to get into a restaurant, and they said, we don't, we have no tables available. He says, do you know who I am? He goes, no, are you lost? <laughs> it's a good one. That's a good one. But it is, a, it is a ball of confusion out there. There's no doubt about it. Nobody knows what's going on. As long as we can still go bowling, ball of confusion, great. Uh, this guy says uh, in an email, uh, brandmeyershow at gmail.com. Can I get it from being romantic with a cow? Starting to think about it. What if we both wear masks? More cowbell. From Shane Ryan, Elizabethtown, Kentucky. All right, Shane Ryan. No, I don't think that's the case. Oh, more cowbell. I'll tell you, the mask business is, is booming. Yeah, People are making money hand over fist. You have a uh, mask with flowers on it. I didn't. I'm still waiting for the delivery. And yesterday, uh, I wanted. I needed to go to the store, and I don't, and I don't have a mask yet. And I, as I'm leaving the building, I said to the the, the girl at the front desk, mm-hmm. I said, "You know, you wouldn't happen to have an extra mask, would you?" And she said, "No, but there's a guy in the building who's selling them. You want me to get a hold of him?" And I said, "Yes." The guy was there in five minutes with his catalog of masks. Really. <laughs> so, so, I said, okay, I'll take that one, and Piper will take that one. And then he ran up to the house, came back down, and gave us our masks. So you're saying, like, what, they're basically... Uh... Everybody's selling them. If, you're not, if you don't have one, it's because everybody's selling them. That's, well, okay, you get them on the street, you think? Because I, I still don't have a mask. Oh, wait, wait, our mask did come in. Our mask did come in. But I don't know what to do. I still have not been out the door. I have not been out. I've not been to a... Hold on a second. Let me tell you, the masks are no, no fun. No, oh, come on. I mean, I put it on and I, uh, I went into Target and I couldn't wait to leave. Uh, usually I like Target. I like staying there. And I couldn't wait to leave just to get the mask off. <laughs> See, that's, that's, I can't do it. I, I can't, 
I know I have, ladies and gentlemen, don't get me wrong. You do what you have to do. Everybody decide what you're going to do for yourself. But I mean, there's just so much disinformation. Nobody knows what they want to do. But and they're useless. That's also an irritating fact. How do you know that? Just, I mean, just to the well for this, you know, the the, um, the surgeon general of the country initially said, "Don't buy masks because they won't help you. They're they're useless." The CDC agreed with them, but then you know, as time went on, suddenly it seemed like a good idea because what else can we do? And so everybody started wearing a mask, and now it's you know the law of the land. I don't know. Uh, the guy, hey Shane in Kentucky. Shane Ryan, Elizabethtown, Kentucky. It's, uh, you can't get it from making love to a cow. That's number one. Unless the cow has it. Unless the cow has it. Well, yeah, that's right. That's right. Speaking of Kentucky, I saw, and everybody's protesting now, walking around, get us out of our houses, walking around with machine guns in Michigan. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's always a good time when you see a guy walk yeah. into the estate building with a machine gun and an AK-47 and going like, hey, can yeah. I come out now? Yeah, that's the guy I want to. St- I, I want to see him stay home. Yeah, you, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. Out, out. Uh, there was a sign. The guy had a sign that said, "Kentucky, let my people mow." And it, oh, Buzz has got some noise going on in the yeah, background. Yeah, all right. Gonna... Hey, Buzz, I must be your omelets ready. No. Come on, what does it mean? Turn that off. It's my bank calling. Your bank? <laughs> yes. What are they saying? Uh, hopefully they're saying, Buzz, your account is uh, open and you have access to it now. That's what I'm hoping they'll say. Well, what's wrong with your, what do you mean? They had to close it down because somebody was messing with it. Somebody was trying to hack me. Seriously? I had to close all my accounts and open new ones. New security, blah, blah, blah. And that little ding, ding, ding you just got was your bank telling you, go ahead and open it. Well, it was, I don't know what they were saying because I missed the call. <laughs> So I'll find out later. Wait, why don't you look at it? I want to see what it is. It, it, well, it's, it just says missed call. I okay. Mean, it's on the voicemail or something. All right. I, I, don't, I really don't want to share it with okay. this. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, with, with the audience. <laughs> Come on, man. We're recording a live podcast with you, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Live. Okay, so let my people mow. That was a good one. It was some gardeners walking around with the science. Let my people mow. It's funny, though. Whenever I think of Kentucky, I only think of one joke. One line. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Hey, man. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Buzz, I uh, was staying in a Kentucky hotel. I called down to the front desk. I said, hey, listen, I got a leak in my sink. And they said, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now, the inflection was wrong on that. It should have been, I got a leak in my sink, right? Yeah. Let me try it again. Okay. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Hey, Buzz, I was uh, just in Kentucky. Boy, I got to tell you, I was in a hotel there uh, in Kentucky, and I called the front desk, and I said, I got to take a leak. <laughs> no. See, I can't tell jokes. Stick to the script. I can't. Don't don't improvise. I can't. <laughs> I, w- I wish I had a script. I can't. I, I cannot tell a joke. Hey, Buzz, you know, I was in a hotel in uh, Kentucky, uh-huh. and uh, I, maybe I got to make it more real. Why don't you say how... Why don't you say, how was your weekend or something? No, yeah. that doesn't make sense because we don't go, nobody goes anywhere. <laughs> you can't say, hey, Joe, how's your weekend anymore? <laughs> hold on, I got to take my mic down. It's like going up. Hold on. Hello, hello, hello. Hold on. I want to test, 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 test. Hello, hello, hello. Buzz, I was uh, in Kentucky uh, at a hotel over the weekend and I called the front desk and I say, hey, listen, I got a leak in my sink. And the uh, guy at the front desk says, go ahead. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell any difference. You didn't? You didn't notice the difference? No, I, I didn't hear the difference. That's funny as hell. Hey, Fabio Vivian. <laughs> Fabio it seemed a little Vivian. less funny yeah, the yeah, second yeah. time. <laughs> I agree with you. I think when you hear that same joke ten times, it's pre- pretty much not really funny. Kentucky. Hey, Shane. Hey, you know what? Did you hear they have raised the minimum drinking age in Kentucky to 32 it seems they want to keep alcohol out of the high schools. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Shane in Kentucky with the email. How many rednecks does it take to eat a possum? Two. One to eat it, one to watch out for traffic. Yay, you got Kentucky Joe here doing the mornings for you right here. Do you know why, fly, why birds fly upside down over Kentucky? Because there ain't nothing worth crapping on in Kentucky. Oh, come on now, man. Why Kentucky?
I don't know why. I don't know why. It just seems like a southern town and people write jokes about it. If you, if you punch in Kentucky anywhere, you'll find a joke like that. What's the, okay, what's the difference between a Kentucky cheerleader and catfish? Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't guess. I, I can't one, imagine. One stinks and has whiskers and the other oh, one's a geez. fish. Oh. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, what's three miles long and has seven teeth and smells like a dog crap? I have no idea. Unemployment line in Kentucky. Uh, no, but you know what? That's probably anywhere now. The unemployment line anywhere. What comes out every new... What? <laughs> no. I, what cut? No. What, is what, what comes out new every spring in Kentucky, hangs around until October, turns turns yeah. brown, and then uh, falls off. I don't know what. Their underwear. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that one worked. That one worked, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Fabio Viviani, the great uh, chef, owns a lot of restaurants in Chicago. He owns uh, Sienna Tavern, Bar Sienna, Prime and Provisions, Worldwide Top Chef winner. Fabio Viviani will hear his take. Follow him at Instagram at Fabio Viviani on the world of restaurants and things around that. This is Fabio Viviani of Top Chef. I spend my days driving women wild by cooking and speaking Italian. I'm like the opposite of Jonathan Brandmeier. <laughs> Thank you. There he is, Fabio. You, you got that horse. What? You ride. Yeah. We're here for a long time. We're here for a good time. Yeah. We're here for a long time. Yeah. We're here for a good time. Right. We're here for a long time. to ride. <laughs> Bam Get ready to ride. Yeah. Look at him now. Bam a lamb. Bam a lamb. Get ready worldwide. Yeah. Now, when you deal with crazy people, they say crazy things. This is going to blow your mind. Call Johnny B. 833-5JB-SHOW. 833-552-7469. Am I on the air? The Jonathan Brandmeier Showcast. This yeah. is the new and the not to make normal you for the rest of your life. Every day. Yeah, all right. All right. Uh, 8335JB Show. We'll take your calls, emails, a lot of crazy stuff coming in. Man, you people all blow me away. You're so funny and weird. All of you are weird. Uh, this, uh, you're, you're all, everybody's crazy. There's no doubt about it in my mind now. And I think they get crazier. Uh, this one says, uh, Chris DeBrizo, guy, buzz for governor. <laughs> I agree. Boy, I, you'll all be sorry. Buzz for governor. <laughs> um, from Bill Rubel, I now live in Tulsa. What a story that is. Love hearing you and buzz back again. It's the best. I live in Tulsa, but that's another story. The DJ here sound like they all spent time at Larry Wirtz radio boot camp. <laughs> God awful. Never listened to local radio here ever. Well, radio is, as you know, that's uh, doesn't really exist. It's going to be gone. Who are I they, the, who they the only, hire? The only place where you can hear real radio, I think, is in on college campus uh, radio. Yeah, local. Yeah, right. I mean, ever everybody, nobody knows what they're doing. And, and, that's and, just like this, <laughs> right? Yeah, you get a feeling. Right, that anything could happen, and it's kind of exciting. Yeah, you don't know what's. You see, this is kind of like back to the day where you're going like, I don't know. What to do here? We'll do something. We'll figure it out. But um, I think that radio, if they want any advice, I would say keep it local. When it's local, I hate those satellite guys. I hate them. When they're talking about, like, they're pretending they're in your locale, you know, these DJs who do the music yeah. tracking, and you can hear them mispronounce the names, and, yeah, Shotgun Joe, and I'm here in, uh, you know, <laughs> Minicawa, Wisconsin. <laughs> what? Minicawa? <laughs> what the hell's that? Uh, this one says, uh, Johnny... This is from Jeff Bistricki. Hey, Johnny, I've been deemed, I have been deemed an essential worker. My boss takes my temperature every morning before work, and I'm getting tired of it. 
I think he's using an oversized thermometer because my butt Body is really, right. really sore. I knew that was coming. I saw that yeah, coming. yeah, you could see that one all the way for. I saw him wind up and go. <laughs> all right, eight three three five JB show. Um, keep those memory lane calls for the archive request. We do have some uh, archive requests that we're going to try to get to later. Um, it's a designated archive request ordered by me, the mayor of Mayonnaise, the governor of Goo, the lord of the Lebanese lumber. We want to hear about you. <laughs> So you talk about you. Hold on. Go ahead, please. Yes, go ahead. Hello. Yes. Hi. Yes. Go. It's Chris from Chicago. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Hey, Johnny B, man. I can't believe I'm talking to you. Holy <laughs> cow, bud. Why does it take so long for them to realize Because they, that? It's, they don't know. It's, it's not the their beep, fault, really. Johnny, it's, it's the tough. beep. There is no beep. See, I told the beep. Mac, please. Mac, didn't we ask Bill Malone to see if he can make a <laughs> louder beep? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Something. We don't know. We don't know. Johnny okay. Was, you're on. Dude, you're on. Don't I'm waste so your time. Glad, I'm so glad that you guys are on the radio. I love you guys. The, when you guys came back on, the, the hair on my arm started to rise. Uh, hey, listen. <laughs> um, shout out to... Uh, Shout out to a buddy of mine, Kevin. We're, we're, I'm, a, I'm a cop in Chicago, and man, we're so glad you guys are back on the, on the radio, whatever this thing is. It's yeah, what, 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 whatever it is. Hey, what's it like uh, out there now being a cop? Because I'm seeing these cops, and they're kind of put. What is your name, by the way? I always say your name if you can help us out with that. Great. I did. I told you, Chris. Chris oh, I'm sorry. Chicago. You're you're right. I apologize. You did. Hey, Chris. So uh, you're a cop in Chicago? Absolutely. Okay. What's it like for you out there? trying to enforce these six foot rules and what is it like out there what are you encountering well listen I, well I'm a, I'm a detective but I don't I don't work the street anymore but uh all that stuff it's 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 all unconstitutional but I don't want to get into that no I, you know there you go. I got it <laughs> you know what I mean I you know I I can't really talk about the job too much but I just I mean I love your voice I love listening to you guys I wish I remember back in the day when I, before I got in a job I worked high rises downtown in the trades, and all of us, we all listen to you every day, Monday through Friday. Well, hold on a minute, Chris. I got to tell you one thing. Hold on a minute about something about the Chicago cops. The Chicago cops were always and it, it, amazingly buzz. You remember the rock and roll cops? Yes, I do. Yeah, they were part of the show. We would literally have cops helping us perform scams on people in the streets, and they did it. They would close off the streets so I could go <laughs> in the street and catch a pass from Bart Starr. They would just close Johnny, the street. They were no, honestly, I think that's the thing that's it. It it kind of uh, permeates through all of the Chicago vibe, the Midwest vibe in general. Is just, hey man, let's just have some fun, and that's kind of well, gone. It, it, it's you, Johnny. You were you were a fixture here. You got us. You you, you everybody uh, just went to you because you just you just got us. You you got the working guy. You know, the blue collar guy, you brought us into the show and the, the crazy people that call, you know, you were just a fixture here. We miss you. And we hey, love Chris, you. you're a detective, though. You what do you what do you, you want me to go with you on a drive around or what do you do as a detective? <laughs> Johnny, I want you. I, me and another a fellow a worker of mine, co-worker, we miss you. We're talking about calling you, inviting us to the Christmas party. We just want to hang out and have a couple of drinks yeah. with you. Oh, I'd say Johnny would be great in the interrogation room. Yeah, I would be great Johnny, in the interrogation room. You want to come in to work? I work at the black site. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Don't say things like, I don't know what you said right there. I don't know what that means. But yes, could I, Buzz, thank you so much. Could I, <laughs> if I could just come into maybe a low rent case, just to see what it would be like for me, you walk out, you know, with the mirrors, right? Chris is a detective, right? You have that deal going, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Yep, come okay. on in. Okay, now wait, 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 hold on a second. So now... You got a guy in there. Just let me record myself walking in there. Oh, and I just walk in like, okay, so you're talking to my friend Chris, aren't you? And uh, what? Listen, let me tell you something about Chris. Don't worry about him. I'm on your side. I'm going to go in there like better call Saul. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to nail that guy to the wall and give you the credit. Oh, you want to do like a uh, good cop, bad cop routine? Yes, huh? I'm the good guy. <laughs> okay, Chris? Uh, let's do it. Take my number. Um, no, 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 no. Here's e email me anything. I'll see all the email. Brand Meyer show at gmail.com. Chris, nice talking to you. Uh, uh, we got to get some more people in here. Go ahead. 833. Three. Art, art, art. Five JB. This is seven. It's oh. seven, five, yes. uh, three. Yes. Seven, four. All right. 
I have an alien abduction story. Go ahead. You. Go ahead, please. My wife wanted to go to a Portillo's last night. I said, hey, let's go to Shake Shack. She said, Portillo's. I said, Shake Shack. I said, okay, Portillo's it is. Go to Portillo's, get in line. It's about eight cars. All of a sudden, there's a pounding on my roof yeah. of the car. Right. My grandson, Eric, is in the back seat. You know, he'd been uh, sniffing glue, so he'd been living with us for a while. Okay. Eric, I said, hey, Eric, get out and see what's going on. All of a sudden, I hear a giant. <laughs> Eric didn't come back. I said, this is my chance. I said, honey, get out of the car. Go see what it is. All of a sudden, the giant. <laughs> she didn't come back either. I left the parking lot and went to Shake Shack. This radio station has consciously decided <laughs> not to spend money on a delay switch. Right. Not to conduct a careful background check of the people it places on the air. Right. And to allow individuals to say almost anything they want in foreign languages without having staff on duty who can even <laughs> understand what they're saying. That's right. I'm going to, Buzz, can you imagine if I just, here's what I want to do. We've been trying to figure out a way to do this, but no one can come into the house here. Is kind of set up these cameras and we just pop up in your Facebook or wherever we are. Think about this. We pop up at midnight and we just start taking crazy ass calls. Drunk. <laughs> That's the way I want to do it. And no doubt about that. 8335JB-SHOW. He's on the line. I'm just punch the phone in. Go ahead, please. Jonathan, this is Mitch. Hey. I'm not happy about what you're saying what about my state of Kentucky. Oh, hey, Mitch. How's it going? Mitch, all right. I'm a, as you know, I'm a human and amphibian hybrid. I'm out here washing my car, but I'm out of turtle wax. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for calling. See, Buzz, I don't even think we have to pretend we're doing a Art Bell alien hey. show. I know the aliens have been discovered by the Pentagon. That's great. This is going to bring all the nuts back out. They're going to forget all about the COVID virus, all about COVID-19, and they're just going to call and have some fun. Uh, hello, please. You're on the line. It's Terry, Johnny. Hey, Terry. I've got a Kentucky joke for you, Johnny. Go, go ahead, please. Knock, knock. Just... <laughs> Just a second. I want to get my hillbilly music ready. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. It's our first knock-knock joke of the day. You, be, you people just amuse me. I just can't stand it. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Let me be the judge of that. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead, sir. Terry, you said your name was. What is your? What is it against, Terry? Terry. Yeah, go ahead. I'm ready. Terry. Knock-knock. Go ahead. Who's there? Knock, knock. Yes, who? <laughs> I eat my... Ah, uh, knock, knock. Buzz, just a second, Terry. Hold on. It up, Hold buddy. on one second, Terry. Uh, Buzz, this is to show you how I can't tell a joke. I can't even do a knock, knock <laughs> joke correctly. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. He, he's not helping you. <laughs> he's not helping me. All right, go ahead. Knock, knock. Knock, knock, Johnny. Yes. Knock, knock, Johnny. Who's there? I eat mop. I eat mop who? <laughs> oh, we got you. There it is. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> hey, man. Kids, kids are going to love that one. See, buzz. See, kids like knock, knock jokes. Knock, knock. Who's there? I mean, my, I, I can't do it either. <laughs> not surprising. Oh man, that is not surprising. Oh my God, I I don't know how this all started with the. Oh, I know because the guy sent me. Uh, how did he get? Can you get coronavirus? I'm living in, in. Just a second. Where was he again? He was living in. His name was Shane, and he was living in. Uh, Shitville. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, okay. What does a Kentucky girl say? I've no, no, that's too dirty. Yikes. Okay, anyway, he lived on. He lived. <laughs> he lived in uh, Kentucky. And by the way, Shane, I guarantee you, sorry you wrote me that note now. Brand by your show <clears throat> at gmail.com. Uh, go ahead, please. We're just taking your calls now. Go ahead. Hey, got a question for you, JB. Sure. Uh, besides uh, Angie Bowie, who was the worst interview you ever had all those years? Well, it's interesting. That's a really, honestly, a really good question, whatever your name is. 
When you get on, if you can, just say your name. Then I'll, if you also, I'll tell you what would help. When you say your first name, then you'll know when I say your name back. That, yeah, yeah. That you're the one on the I air. Okay, Angie Bowie. Um, that was bad. <laughs> that, that was, was unbelievable. She, just walked, she basically just walked out on you. <laughs> yeah, she threw, get this, she threw the headsets down and ran out the door. And it's all because, oh, let me see if I can find this. Hold on a minute. She it, said you didn't read her book or something. Yeah, no, but like yeah, I said if I read your book, then I wouldn't be able to a- answer your questions. Well, if, I, if you can find Angie Boy, I'll, I'll do it. But the other question to you, Want to answer to your question was <clears throat> the other interview that I remember, and it wasn't the worst, but it was one I didn't enjoy because I don't like people who come in with an agenda, and you're not going to believe who it was. I bet Buzz, you'd never fit. Well, Buzz, wait, there was one that was really crazy. That was Larry Flint. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. And these are the things, by the way, when you remember them, just send them to us because we'll get them up in the archives. And we'll get those out. But, uh, yeah, Larry. That that, that was crazy in an entertaining way. Right, right. The Angie Bowie thing. Was just nuts. I I found that painful. Painful. Yeah, yeah. She was yelling at me. and, And then I started yelling at her. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let me just look myself here. Hold on a minute. You just kept saying your stupid, stupid, stupid book. Is that what you said to her? Yes. (laughs) Maybe it's under Angela Bowie. I don't know. David Bowie. I know we have it somewhere. There's no doubt about it. But the other one you'll find weird is um, Rodney Dangerfield. Now, you would think Rodney Dangerfield in the studio sitting in front of me loved Rodney. So we get on the interview, and I'm starting to talk to him. And I, hey, Rodney, how's it going? And then we go to a commercial break. And he goes, listen to me. Listen to me. Just Here's the questions you're going to ask me. You ask me how my wife is. You ask me how does she cook. You ask me how am I doing. Bob, you ask me these questions. I'll give you a joke and then I'm going to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he said that. That's what he said to me. <laughs> I got a picture of me and him. Couldn't have been, comes back on the air. Couldn't have been nicer. Really? So to answer your question, sir, uh, Angela Bowie and uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Although the interview, I think, might have been funny because Rodney Dangerfield was funny. So... You wouldn't have known it that I didn't enjoy it, but with Angie Well, Bowie, he's asking you to set him up, that's all. I mean, you ask me yeah, this, yeah. I got the joke. Right, 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 right. Ask right. me something else, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you ever watch, go go to um, YouTube and watch uh, Johnny Carson talking to Rodney Dangerfield. Johnny would go, hey, Rodney, how's it going? And Rodney would go... 10 minutes, non-stop. Yep. Me, yep. I'm just a dope from Wisconsin, inquisitive kid, just going, hey, man, so what's going on? What are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you asking me these questions for? You're going to do a real interview, dude? Yeah, I just want to know, like, how you doing? Like, how do you do all that stuff? And what's, you know, <laughs> me, just being me. I got to be me. I've got to be me. And this is Angie Bowie. We found it. Hold on. You need to hear the history to see the future. The Brenmeyer Archives. Good morning. I'm, I'm going to name <laughs> names that I want to know about these guys well, that, in your life with David Bowie. Well, names that are in your book. All right, well, shut up then. I'm let listening. Me speak. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, hold on a second. Let me set that up a little bit. So David Bowie married to this one here, Angela Bowie. Angie Bowie, and uh, she had in her tell-all book, she had all these things with her having sex with Rod Stewart and Mick Jagger, and Mick Jagger and David Bowie in bed together while she was in the middle. And I just wanted to hear some of the fun, <laughs> the fun, right. the fun stuff. And then uh, she didn't want to tell it. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to name names, and I want to know about these guys well, Rod- in your life with David Bowie. Well, names that are in your book. All right, well, shut up then. I'm and let listening. Me speak. Go ahead. Uh, Rod Stewart, I have only met. Rod's is just a great performer with, you know, a propensity to fall in love at the drop of a hat with a model, particularly a blonde model. Yeah. And that's really all. What? You didn't say anything. You said listen, but you didn't say anything. You didn't. You, who did he fall in love with? You? 
I never. It's. Have you read the book, John? No, I don't then read stop. the book. I'm not going to read the book before you come in. What if I hated this book when you came in? Oh, please don't be ridiculous. What if I did? The question would be based in reality. If no, you had any idea, no, no. it never says anything about Rod Stewart falling in love All with right. anyone. So get a grip. Okay. Well, why don't you get a new PR company then? Because that's what it says. There's stories about it. Cold does cra- it not does too. say that the names and backstage passes read like get a loose cute. tool block. Jimmy Page. Rod Stewart. That's right. That's got nothing to do okay. with falling in love with anyone. Don't be rude. I'm not rude. You're being rude. You just I'm said not. to me. Yes, you are. You just said to me that uh, I asked you a story about Rod Stewart, and you just said. I gave you a story about Rod Stewart, which is what is in the book. I, there was no story about falling in love with who? Did he fall in love with you? He didn't fall in love with either of us. Uh, okay. It who doesn't he... say that in okay. the press release. Yeah, great. It, that's what it says right it here. It does not. That's you what just it says. read it. Okay. What about Jimmy Page? Should I let listeners ask you questions? No, don't bother. Are you sure? Have a good, nice to meet you, Angie. Nice to meet you, too. See you later. Bye now. Hey, Gail, why should you go with her? What are you doing in here? Goodbye. Can we mention that the books are No, we can't. Get out of here. I'm not going to plug. The, get, get out of here. Goodbye. Thanks, John. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice to see you again, Gail. See you later. Tell that book guy goodbye. What a stupid book. Man, what did I say? I don't understand what I said to get her so upset. I'm telling you, that press release is the most misleading press release I've ever seen in my life. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, orgies with Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. Tell me about Rod Stewart. Well, he loved to be in love with models. Wow, really? That's in the book? I mean, Rod Stewart liked beautiful models? That's incredible. That's unbelievable. Who would have thought that Rod Stewart liked beautiful women? Oh, my God. I would never be able to figure that out. Let me get the book and read that now. I'm talking about, it says, Coke crazed orgies with Rod Stewart, Mick Jagger, Jimmy Page, Marianne Faithful, Peter Noon. Okay, she had a Herman Zermatt in there. All right, I'll give her that. What an idiot. You've been listening to another Jonathan Brandmeier show. Instant request. There it is. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. A, that's a highlight for me. It's one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever listened to in my life. The good news about that, Buzz <laughs> Kilman, is this. You and I have always been separated by a wall. This time our wall's miles and miles apart. But so you never had to experience it with me in front no, of you. No, no. Hey, but I don't know why my mic's falling down again. But, um... Yeah, you. So you could sit in there. You see what we put on Facebook. You're you're so you holding coffee, saying how much you enjoy. Oh, I did. I yeah, did. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. How it's, much you enjoy watching me freak right. out? <laughs> freak out. Yeah. Right. That's pretty I funny. A, I I get a hot cup of Java, yeah. kick back, <laughs> and listen to Johnny freak out. Fantastic. And that's pretty much it. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's it. I love that one right there. Another instant request. That's a great archive request. Once again, uh, we don't need to go down memory lane if you don't want to, but when you take me down there, then I remember that stuff. Uh, go ahead, please. 833-5JB-SHOW. The great Fabio Viviani on the program today somewhere. Here we go. Go ahead, please. Say Steve. Hey, st- say Steve. Yeah, I'll see. That worked. Okay, great. Yeah. Hey, uh, it'd be great to hear some Aunt Marsha, but bef- before you get to that, can you do me a favor? And next time some knucklehead calls up and starts droning on about how happy they are to have you back listening to you, we are all happy, of course. That's why we're listening. Just hang up on them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Your first one up, buddy. Ain't no doubt about it. Just remember, I'm Art Bell. If you want to call me, 833-5JB-SHOW. Let's go to some email. And then... uh. Oh, this is too long. This email's too long, I think. The um, hummingbird stuff, man, did that get attention. I told I you. Some, I saw some huge ads for the product on uh, Facebook. I mean, I mean, he, he's experiencing a renaissance in his efforts to sell that product. Yeah, um, here's the thing. If you don't, if you didn't hear episode number four, I believe it is, The Bulls, The Birds, that's uh, in the podcast. You can always get that in your hand on demand. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Automatically receive uh, new podcasts when they're released. Get updates on the schedule, anything else, by signing up for the email at brandwireshow.com. <clears throat> now, the... Uh, the hummingbird thing got a lot of play. This guy came on the air, and uh, 
the ouch, ouch. Okay. He um, said, hey, listen, I got to, sh- you, you, you know, I can't even explain. You have to listen to that episode. You have to understand. It's a ring that you put on your finger and you fill it with something like syrup or sugar or something like that. And then you can put your hand out and the hummingbird will eat from it. So you can feed it, the bird, with your finger. And when I called this guy, I thought it was the craziest thing. But guess what? So many, and I made him give, if, if you're a business, if you want to plug on this show, send me an email. I, I spent a lot of time with you. I will plug it. But you've got to give our audience something. This is what I'm talking about. If you or a loved one ever wanted to hand feed a hummingbird, well, now is your chance. <laughs> yeah. Just a second. Listen to that question right there. If you or your loved one ever wanted to hand feed a hummingbird. Oh, yeah. And, and wait, what he's going to lead up to in his ad is it's going to be a great Mother's Day gift. Uh-huh. Okay. If you or a loved one ever wanted to hand feed a hummingbird, well, now is your chance. Yeah. My name is Chris, and I'm the inventor of the Zoomer Hummingbird Ring. With a little patience, you could have a hummingbird feeding from your ring in no time. <laughs> the Zoomer Hummingbird Ring is made right here in the USA in Lake Zurich, Illinois. Find us on Facebook or visit Zoomer.com. That's Z-U-M-M-R.com. It also makes a great Mother's Day gift. See? Mother's Day. <laughs> Hang on. all the bases. Uh, Hanky, my mom, if you were alive, holding a, a ring out with a hummingbird on it. Come on, it's crazy. Yeah, but uh, but also, I mean, he did say, it, because he does say it takes a, you know, a little time, because you have to train the hummingbird. Yeah. I just saw this guy today on Facebook. I can't find it now, but he was a guy. He he is a dude, demonstrate. He's on our Facebook, and he's demonstrating... Hi, this big guy with long hair and a beard like a macho dude he's got his little hand out and the bird is landing right on his right on his hand right on his hand and it just looks so funny that it's him you know what I mean yeah it's just crazy he's like he's got his finger out and the bird <laughs> and the bird is right on his hand uh, yeah uh, and I told that guy he had to send out a bunch of hummingbird feeders I got my this one says uh, from Peggy I got my email in on time, and Chris is going. This guy who's, who, who uh, has the hummingbird company in Wakanda, Illinois, Chris Smith. He said, I got my email in on time, and Chris is going to send me a hummingbird feeder. Out here in California, we have tons. I'm going to try to feed very hard, train our hummingbirds. <laughs> okay. What the hell? <laughs> Peg Truckus. Hold on a second. I mean, hummingbirds are fascinating. <laughs> Yeah. Because they just stay still when they're flying. I mean, they can just sit there and, you know, batter their wings and they Your just hang there. call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Three. No, no, we don't want that. I just want to, hey, Peg, if you're out there somewhere, I want to hear your uh, your uh, appraisal description of how your little thing went. Hey, Peg. At the tone, please record your message. Yes. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, Peg. Peggy, how you doing? This is Johnny B. How's it going? Got your email about you uh, learning to train the hummingbirds there in California. Okay. And uh, we are called you. Okay. To see if it really works. Send me a video. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Appreciate it. And that's, so anyway, this guy sent out tons of them. Tons of them. And we got them. So you people, Chris, his uh, hummingbird... Rings that allow the user to hand feed hummingbirds is a big hit. See, but you have to know how to train the hummingbirds. What? I don't get that part. I know. uh, It's a wrinkle. I mean, a hummingbird is not interested in going into your hand for any reason. Except the syrup. Well, except, yeah. But to get that close, I mean, you've got to make friends with that hummingbird. Right. Right. I don't know how to do that. Well, he, that's why the hummingbird ring works. You put it on your hand, next thing you know, you got a hummingbird on. <laughs> I don't think so. You got a hummingbird. I don't think so. No, it's, you, I'm telling he you, He said, he, I remember the interview, he says, you've got to train the hummingbird to come to your hand. Now, how do you do that? I don't know. 
he said, but you do it by putting it on his... Uh, no, 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 uh, no, no. Uh, there's, some, there's some learning process that has to take place. And that's when I said, what, do you get a trainer? Do you have classes? And... Yeah, that was the craziest interview. To hear the full interview, like I said, go to the last episode, episode four, The Bulls, The Birds. But uh, I want to make sure... of the Bulls. Wait one second. Hey, Chris. Hello? Yeah, Chris. Yeah. This is Johnny B. Are you Chris Smith? I am Chris Smith. Yeah, you're the guy I spent two hours with last week, right? <laughs> That's correct. We do two hours today or no? No, no. Get in the phone now. Get your mouth in the phone. Get in the phone. Okay, there you go. Okay, now, did you just hear, were you listening live right now or no? I wasn't. I lost the stream in the car, so I just uh, turned it off. How did you lose it in the car? I want to find out about how did you lose it in the car? I'm not sure. It was on, and then all of a sudden it stopped. It just stopped. So I, I figured I'd listen to the replay. Let me ask you a question. When it stopped, okay. were you were you asking about, were you talking to Siri when you when it stopped? No. No. Yeah, because I've done that, and it stops when you say something to Siri or move off of your thing. So we're working on an app right now. So we'll and once we have the app, it will be flawless. But right now, okay. we just got the shit show on a shit stream. Okay, perfect. <laughs> enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it. Who, who's the one talking dirty now? Not me. I know, Billy. All right, so anyway, uh, we got your uh, people. It was My brother got one. People got him. You did what you said you were going to do. And don't even think you could come on a show and plug a company without doing what you say you're going to do, because that would not be cool. And we'd make sure everyone knew it. So you understand that, right? But you did a good job. I understand that. Okay, so. Thanks. Buzz said you have to have a training process to get a bird, the hummingbird, to come to your hand. Is that real, or was that just his imagination? No. Well, the hummingbirds need to, like, you know, it is a wild animal, and the magic, the ring is not uh, magic. So you kind of have to get them used to it. So that's what I kind of call the training process. Yeah, okay. Because it's a bird that doesn't want to normally come to your finger. I get it. But did you so see... What do you, what do you do to attract the bird initially? So so initially, uh, you know, you have a feeder out there. I mean, when the hummingbirds start coming to your feeder, uh, they'll start coming to the feeder, whatever kind of feeder it is. And then you just kind of acclimate them to the ring. That's really the training process. So once they get used to the ring... You know, you go out there with the ring on, and then they got to get used to you a little bit, but they'll kind of check it out, and they've already eaten from the ring, so then they will eat from the ring on your hand. Seems like a great time. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, I can't believe. You've been in the house too long. Yeah, I, I, I got to get outside, man. I cannot tell you, Chris, the people that responded to me, and be honest with me, did you get a lot of sales out of it? Uh, you know, it's been, it's been uh, a bit crazy, I'm not going to lie. It's been, uh, it's been, I, you know, I don't know where all of them come from because it's coming through Amazon, but it has been, the last week has been, uh, has been pretty crazy for sure. Well, I wanted to make sure you understood that they're coming from this audience, but number two, we don't know what's coming from Amazon. If I'm anyway, I've always just clicked the button and go to Amazon. So that's where I'm getting my hummingbird feeder from Amazon. Right. So you got a lot of, you got a lot of business out of it. That's good news, right? I did, and it's very good news, and I and I greatly appreciate it. Okay, well, I think it's unique. I think it's great, and small businesses today are, uh, you know, they're getting killed out there, and the people who are looking for work are getting killed out there. So if we can help, we want to help. Show at gmail.com. My hand is out the window right now. Ah! Get off of me! The fabulous Bo Deans! Out of work? Good work if you can get it. Hummingbird feeders, whatever it is. Enjoy. We'll take a break. Come right back.
to me It's good to work If you can get it It's good to work If you can get it It's good to work If you can get it It's good to work If you can get it It's good to work If you can get it Baby, just let it work Work, 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 work Jonathan Brandmeier. Are you out of the toilet? No. Oh, you weren't in the toilet? <laughs> no. Oh. It's just right here. Well, I said you could take a break. Take a, take a I, break. Uh, I took a 30-second break. That 30-second break. All right, yeah. <laughs> we take that out of the pocket. I'm a workaholic. What can I tell oh, you? Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Here we go. the brand Meyer that's me I'm not an illegal alien well but we do welcome all aliens to the show as always that's buzz up in there buzz kill man uh email brand Meyer show at gmail.com um Johnny B from Danny nice to listen to an interview uninterrupted for a change natural your uh, interview with Michael Wilbon great welcome back guys hopefully buzz oh what is this Oh, you're in the Hall of Fame for a reason. Hopefully Buzz follows, which, you know, I said uh, in New York City, in the Radio Hall of Fame ceremony, I said Buzz Kilman should be in the Hall of Fame, and you should be. And, and, no, I, and I, I, pre, I know that you said you, that, I did say I it, 100%. That. I said it right there. And I said it by one at one twenty in the morning when nobody was paying attention, right. but it went out there to the world. That's right. Um, and, yeah. Uh, that, that's probably as as close as I'll get to the oh, Hall of Fame. Oh, that's ridiculous. But, but, that's, but that's close enough for me. It's fine. Let, let me tell you something. That is ridiculous. You 
who there's guys in the Hall of Fame that shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, well, there's that. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> there's that. There you go. So you, yeah, you, Buzz Kilman, should be in the National Radio Hall of Fame. Recording a live podcast. That's when we stop, break a second, come back. Because you're in it, baby. It's a podcast with you. The live what podcast. Are, do we, Showcast. Do we, do we get to say something about the Bulls? Yes. Uh, yes, I want you to I, uh, tell me what your take on The Last Dance was right now. Well, first of all, it, it's it's a brilliant piece of filmmaking. I yeah. mean, it's that's why it's so good. Is I mean, it's, And it's good because... They've got the material. It's almost impossible to screw the material up. I mean, they've got so much stuff that is so fascinating, up close and personal, with Rodman and, and Pippen and 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 Michael. I mean, you're just you're you feel privileged to watch it. Yeah. I mean, and 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 then it's you know once again it's beautifully made. Yep. So I watched the first two episodes, and then. Uh, you know, I wait for a couple of days, and, and I thought, okay, let's get back to the last dance. Yep. And I go from episode two, where the Bulls have, you know, Doug Collins is the coach. He and he and Michael are in love with each other, yep. and 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 things couldn't be better. And there, you you get the sense. Everybody gets the sense, including Michael, that we're on our way. Here's where we go. Yep. So I'm excited to see episode three. And I turn that on, and I start watching it, and it's where. What happened to Doug Collins? He's not. He's no longer the coach. Oh, that's it's I, Phil Jackson. What? What? what, what I must missed a. I must. I must have missed the episode where Doug Collins left and Phil Jackson came in. But no, there was no such episode. Yeah. And I remember when it happened, Uh-oh. I okay. was in town. Are you going to go down a path? Because I... I'm not going to go down it, but, but you I'm know gonna, what I'm talking I'm about. I'm going to point the direction. Oh, <laughs> I'm not Doug... going to go down the path, but I'm going to give you a direction in which to head. <laughs> Doug Collins was summarily fired from the Bulls. No matter how much Michael Jordan loved the man, and he did, Doug Collins left. And... Uh, apparently, it, 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 it's a community secret why he got fired, and I'm not going to be the guy Mm-mm. to to uh, to tell that secret. Nope. No. But but everybody, I have a feeling everybody who was in this town at that time knows that secret. And to you people from other countries and around the world listening to us, this town means Chicago, and it's so weird. But you know, I when I was watching that, I thought the same thing, and then I thought. Hey, this is what I said to my own head. <laughs> hey, what's the deal with Doug Collins? Wait, oh, then I went, here's what I said to my head again. I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> right? Right. Now, <laughs> right. okay, now, I don't want to lend credence to these ridiculous rumors that get started about people. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a bad thing. But something happened. I never heard the story. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. And if we don't really know the story as to why Doug left, I don't need to hear, especially on the air. No, I, I, I'm not going to do it. And I, I've heard the story and I believe it. I'm still not going to do it. Oh, wait a minute. When we say on the air, we're in the air. We're, we're streaming, not dreaming. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> so if this gets by, uh, into the podcast or whatever it is, we say something. There's no FCC violations here. No. Can someone still sue me? No, I don't. I don't think so. No. <laughs> just, just a second. Whenever I need legal advice, ladies and gentlemen, I go to Buzz Kilman for my legal advice. Yeah, yeah, hey, Buzz, think opi- they can I, sue me? I got an opinion on everything. <laughs> you think? By the way, if you need a lawyer, Buzz Kilman. He's got an opinion on everything. Available now. Buzz eight three three five JB Show. He's. That's your thing. You're like better call Saul. You're like better call Buzz. Hey, are you really a lawyer, man? Not really, but I got an opinion about it. Right. That's great. And I'll be the detective we just talked about. I'll be the guy that Chicago cop's going to let me go in and interrogate people. I'll give my clients to you. Who needs radio? <laughs> Nobody needs this crap. This is great. But but that's weird you do bring it up. It is weird you do bring I mean, it up. But I, I, I can't help but think, I mean, everybody who sees that and pays attention to it has to ask the same question. What happened mm-hmm. to Doug Collins? Yeah. It's pretty and weird. Something huge happened. I mean, it was a huge happening when it happened. Yeah, 
but you never, here, here's, that was pre-social media. That's number one yeah. thing we got to remember. Pre-social yep. media where, you know, bad things stayed bad and hidden. Right, right. You could hide things. <laughs> Those were the good old days yep. when you could do some crap, get away <laughs> with it. You could punch a baby in the eye. <laughs> Nobody would write about it. <laughs> but it's funny that none of the sports guys are, are mentioning anything. Well, why would they do that? You think Michael Wilbon is going to talk about that from ESPN? Well, let me. here's what I remember about Doug Collins being fired. What do you think is nuts? Well, if you're going to make the last dance, I mean, you're going to include all this information. You know they've got a bunch of uh, weird footage, people talking about it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Why know, do, oh, somebody decided, okay, we're just not going to deal with this. Okay. Everything is golden here. We don't need the Doug Collins episode. <laughs> I would never have said that. I'd say you do need it. I, that's what, you know, I mean, it belongs there, but, you know, I can see why they chose not to put it. Okay, no, but Buzz, you're saying that now. And we, Doug Collins had, was interviewed during, that, during one yes. of the segments. But here's my problem with what you're doing right now and what we're doing we're lending credence to something we do not know is true. So you're putting this dispersion on Doug Collins' legacy as one of the great Chicago Bulls coach by saying he left because of some weird reason he punched the baby in the eye. That's right. That's what, that's what Let's I'm just saying. say that. That's what happened. And oh, I don't believe it. I mean, I, re, I wait, was wait, there you, you didn't, when it happened. What, you didn't and see And I heard it? inside stories. Oh, oh, oh. And I heard enough. From who? No, don't say it. I'm not, <laughs> no, no, I'm not no. mentioning it. You didn't, you, you didn't hear name. shit. Who told you? This, who, who can give you validity to that story? There, that were, you, several, there were several. You're it was crazy. a common story. No, yeah. It was a common story. Oh, you know, it's another common story. The aliens are flying around in space. Not this common. Now, this from people in the business. I mean, sports people hmm. and, and newspaper people. Well, and why isn't it? Why you know? Why don't we have it? Uh, why aren't we given some kind of an explanation, true or not? Doug Coll a, a little crawl. Doug Collins was fired, and they hired Phil Jackson. They don't even they don't yeah. even acknowledge that that happened. Okay, I, I'm going to go back to the what you said because I was going to talk to the director of the last dance. He wanted to come on, wanted to talk to us. Uh, he was still in editing before we talked to Michael Wilbon, which was in last episode. Right. And I really enjoyed Michael Wilbon, although he did yell at you because you didn't watch the last dance. What do you mean you don't like it? Hey, I, mean, I love that. That's my favorite part of it. I don't know why. And then you went and watched it. So he yelled at you and you went and watched it. Right. But okay. I would have watched it anyhow because, I mean, it's... It's, it's history, and it's really amazing right. history. We're one of the greatest teams we're ever, ever going to see in our lifetime. But let's go back to what you just said about the Doug Collins thing. And you said you wanted to see it. I would have wanted to see it. And I didn't think about it until I actually saw it and said, hey, what about Doug Collins? So to me, if I were to talk to the director now, I would ask him point blank, can right. I ask you a question, sir, Jason? What is the deal with Phil, uh, with Doug Collins. I said Phil Collins getting hired. Yeah, they brought in a guy from Genesis to lead the Bulls to six championships. And the coach of the Chicago Bulls, Phil Collins. What? Very, very energetic. Yeah, short, he was always oh, short, short guy. He can do a layup. That's about it. Okay. Um, but yes, yes, I would say that I would ask that question. Sure. What yeah. happened? I mean, it's, it's an obvious question. Okay. I mean, it's an obvious Pretend I'm the, uh, I'm the director. You ask me. Go ahead. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. It, show you how he would answer the question. Go ahead. Yeah. And so, I, I, my name's I Jason, that, by the way. And Jason, I noticed that uh, from episode two to three, there was there's no explanation uh, why Doug Collins departed. Why did he depart? <laughs> That's uh, right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay, uh, uh, but. Um, <laughs> yes, Jason. <laughs> you know, we just wanted to keep this uh, about. Uh, well, I was going to say they were about basketball, but it's not about basketball. Hmm. Hey, oh, I got another call. There. I got to. I got to cut this interview short. See you later. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't think he'd. I don't think he'd do it. Well, I mean, I understand why they they don't want to do it. It's such a feel good film. Why, why, why disturb that 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 feel good with you know, something that doesn't feel so good? Okay, here's the weird thing though. 
I'm now wondering in my head, like I'm sure anyone listening to this right now who grew up with that team is going, hey, wait a minute. Right. And then the wife or the kids, or the young people who weren't around during that time, the youngsters, they're, uh -huh. they're going, all right, Dad, what's he talking about? Right. That Buzz guy, what's he saying? Well, that Doug Cohen, what's that Brandmeier, what's his deal? <laughs> now you got to go ahead and bring that up again? I don't know, Buzz. Oh, that's it. Only your brain, honestly. <laughs> Only your brain. Well, it was like an alarm went off as soon as they started. It was like, I'm, I'm, the, the episode three starts, there's Phil Jackson. And I'm, I'm like, where's Doug Collins? Oh, man, oh, man. And I didn't realize that Doug Collins was even, because they kind of rid, uh, wrote him out of history, sort of, to me. He was a great coach. Great. Yeah, he was. He was. Hmm. And Michael Jordan just loved him. Yeah. And, and when Michael Jordan loved you, it was great. And when, uh, oh, let me, uh, hold on. You'd think that'd be enough for him to keep Doug Collins the coach, but it wasn't. <laughs> That's a, something happened so bad that they go. couldn't keep him. That's the weird part, because Jordan, he wants somebody in. Right. Doesn't They're matter in. what they did. Although, but wait a minute, though. I mean, look what they did, to, what Jerry Krause did to Phil Jackson. Come on. Jerry Krause, what he did to Phil Jackson was like, hey, I don't care if you go 82 and nothing. Right. right. Uh, 82 and zip, you are getting out. That's it. You're gone. Oh, he was... I mean, he was going to burn the house down no matter what. That's what an, uh, you know, once again, I got some email about people saying they ran into Jerry Krause and he'd, he wanted to tell me stories about how bad he was to them. And I, hey, come on, the guy's dead. Leave him alone. Now, Buzz, if you're me and I'm the only one in this room, of course, uh -huh. and I'm looking down at all these phone lines ringing, should I, <laughs> should I pick them up or not? Oh, absolutely. We're here for them. <laughs> Honestly, God, I'm going to literally take you to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Hello. Beep. Hey. Bu buzz will yeah, provide, bu the buzz will provide the beep I, I from will. now I'll on. I'll be happy to okay. do that. Go ahead, Buzz. Beep. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, random man here. Yeah. What's happening, Johnny B? Right on, Buzz. I wanted to ask you about um, an old interview. Mm-mm. No memory lane right now. Go ahead. I just wanted to be curious, but thanks you. Go ahead. Beep. Oh, my gosh. Johnny, I, totally stupid that I'm telling you this, but this is Peggy about the bird feeder, and it's not your story. Mm, Peggy, could you do me a favor and call me back? Yeah, of course. Thank you. So Peggy's the one who got the bird feeder, and she's training all of her birds, her hummingbirds, <laughs> to eat the eat from her hummingbird ring which was on last week i was just thinking that they're gonna start saying this stuff but they're not just hold on hello beep <laughs> buzzes the beep hey guys listen i'm gonna stay on topic here you know thinking Thank about you. this uh the last dance thing here this week been watching it all week and i'm absolutely loving it and i can't take credit for this thought but i read this this week with michael jordan being one of the executive producers it's got to be a little bias in there somewhere. Yep. It kind of takes a little bit away from the documentary status, don't yes. you think? You, you know, it's great. I'm glad you said that. And I'll tell you why. Because I was approached about doing a film on The Loop, the heyday of the Chicago Radio Loop, right? Sure. Okay. Sure. And, and they said to me, a film, and they said to me, you could be executive producer. And I go, I don't want to be executive producer. Why would I want? That would mean that I have my taint on it. I don't want it. Tell the story you <laughs> want to tell. That's it. You're exactly right, buddy. That's exactly right. So, yes, does he have a take on it? He should. He's Michael Jordan. I get it. But always be aware of that. He is a producer, in an executive producer on that film. Makes and, he, and he could stop anything yep. from being put yep. into that movie right. if he wanted to. That's right. Uh, go ahead, please. Oh, wait a minute. Buzz. Yeah, buzz. Up. Beep. Yeah, there. Beep. Buzz. Sorry. They did explain in, in, in there why he got fired, because he, he didn't want to do the triangle offense, and that's why Jack Jackson wanted to do it, and that's why Krauts uh, put him in. There was no affair. No affair or Ryan Storch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I turned that off, my buddy, but I think he had, they do address the triangle offense. They do address that. Doug didn't want to do it. Uh, Michael, cause, and Michael didn't even want to do it, really. He just wanted the ball. But they kept the triangle offense. They brought it in with uh, Phil Jackson, who loved the triangle offense from Ted Winter. Or Tex Winter, whatever his name was. I'm Tex Winter. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure that was a reason. There, How's that, Buzz, for a reason? Well, it's not the reason, but 
you know, it'll pass. You, you don't know it isn't. Stop it. I do. Wait, be, I actually buzz. do. No, you don't. <laughs> yes, There's I no do. There's no way you know the reason that <laughs> yes, Doug I Collins do. was fired from the Chicago Bulls, except he didn't want to do the triangle offense, and that's that. Okay, that's what I'm going to say anyway. All right. Uh, buzz, beep. <laughs> beep. Beep. Johnny <laughs> B. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, <laughs> on, Buzz. I'm going off topic. I want to know about the Hot Lips interview. Who's Hot Lips? Hot Lips Houlihan? Yeah. All right. Enough of that. Listen, I got to be like Mike. <laughs> I got to be like Mike and jump over him. All right. Now, um, a lot of people did bring up the fact that, hey, was Michael Jordan ever on your show? In email and Facebook, brand by your show at gmail.com. Facebook at brand by your show. If you don't know us, here's how you spell my name B R A N D M E I E R. And yes, Buzz, do you recall Michael Jordan ever being on the show? I don't. Okay. Uh, he was on one time, and he had a really strange, uh, and he had a really great voice. Uh, Michael Jordan, I can't believe they figured it out right away, but I guess I can with that yeah. voice of yours. Well, you know, what can I say? Yeah, that's not, now, you were Barry White in an, in an afterlife, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> man, oh man, can't get enough of your love, baby. That's uh, the first time he called, and that was that. And then one day we were doing a Breakfast with Brandmeyer show, and uh, they said, hey, just if we tell you someone's going to be on the phone... Just pick it up. We're not going to tell you who it is. Just pick it up. They say, okay. And so it's me, you sitting there, uh, and uh, Bruce Wolf, the great Bruce Wolf, sitting there. And the phone rings. And, of course, when the phone rings and they tell me the phone's ringing, we're at a live show at the Hyatt Regency. We're doing a show for the Ronald McDonald House. I pick it up. What's going on now? Hold on a minute. Wait, wait. We have a special celebrity guest, Johnny. Hello. Hello. Not James Earl Jones. <laughs> Is it James Earl Jones? Sounds like good old number 23 to me. Is this Mike? Is this Michael Jordan? Yes, it is. Michael Jordan! Michael, how are you today? Just fine. How you guys doing? Thank you for calling. No uh, problem. You calling for a request on the loop? Me? Yeah. No, nah, I'm calling because Larry told me to call. Larry what? <laughs> yeah. Really? He went all my money last night. Because this is the home of the Bulls, and he's just putting the pressure on you to give when, us a call. And when Larry says jump, Michael yeah. says how high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When the loop says jump, he just he goes for it. Well, listen, uh, you know we're doing this for the Ronald McDonald House. I know that's pretty close to you. You, you get a lot. You get involved with that all the time. Yeah, that's what I heard. And uh, Bruce Wolf is here, and he has always said to me, when I can get Michael Jordan one-on-one, -on -one, I've got a couple of things I want to talk to him about. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, Johnny, no question about it. Michael, 34 points the other night, of course, but tomorrow, the big game yeah, against the Pistons. Can you like do the, it? The ultimate of the week, actually. It's going to be a tough game. We need, to, we need to beat Detroit for once. A lot of people, the naysayers, say that the Bulls don't have enough to overtake Detroit. Well, uh, that's good. I'm glad people think that way. I think it takes pressure off of us. They say we couldn't go to the finals last year. Yeah, we went to the finals, so... Yeah, I like to be the underdog in the situation. Well, I, I don't think the crowd feels that way about uh, you guys not being able to beat Detroit this weekend, do you? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because you've got to turn that into a positive. We've got to go in there, Michael, and we've got to go for it with all the gusto we can muster in one weekend. Is that right? That is true. All that right. is very, very true. And thank you very much for calling. We certainly do appreciate it. You guys have a nice day. Go for it this weekend. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. There it is. There it is. That's uh, Michael calling us at the Higher Regency Breakfast with Brad Meyer show. Didn't know who was going to call, if he was going to call. Didn't have any idea Michael Jordan would call. My favorite part about it, though, is I immediately throw it to Bruce Wolf, <laughs> and Bruce Wolf, the sports guy, Bruce, just goes right into the negative. Oh, yeah. that, well, it's Bruce Wolf. That's what it's like. He just, Bruce just, <laughs> it's just a magic. He's just like, hey, man, listen. Hey, they say you can't beat uh, the, the Detroit. <laughs> and that, what a series. When you see those guys getting pummeled by Detroit, yeah. oh, my God, it was something else. But I guess the only other thing I want to take away from that uh, particular uh, last two episodes was the fact that Dennis Rodman can go in and ask for a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's just nuts. <laughs> nuts. And they give it to him. <laughs> he 
took a vacation. That's the craziest thing. Hold on one second. Where's the rod? Hold on a minute. I'm going to... And then Carmen Electra and Michael Jordan comes knocking at the door. It's unbelievable. That whole thing, when you really think about it, is unbelievable. And it worked. Yeah. Hey, where is that? Where is the uh, vacation part? I want to see if I can find that. Ah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, here it is. Hold on a second. Hold on. Give him come back on time. We had to go get his ass out. That's my favorite part. <laughs> Michael Jordan had to go. Dennis Rodman was losing his mind. He had to go ahead and get um, get uh, Rodman out of Las Vegas. So here the Bulls are in a big run, heading for it. And Rodman comes to Phil Jackson and says, can I have a vacation? In the middle of the season. In the middle of the playoffs. Hey, man, I need a vacation, man. Okay. All right. All right. He didn't come back on time. Once again, he didn't come back on time. Yet, yeah, really? Did you think he was going to come back on time? It's funny how they all planned on him being back in time, like for, like 24 hours. Yeah, I'll be back, sure. I don't think so. Yeah. He's just getting warmed up. Right. <laughs> he, he First of all, he went to Vegas. Dennis Rodman <laughs> said to Phil Jackson, can I have a vacation? Uh, we're in the middle of the playoffs. and uh, Yeah. <laughs> Well, you want okay. to go to Key, want to go to Key West, Jamaica, maybe. Maybe you just want to drive up from here, to, you know, Deerfield, Illinois, up to the Upper Wisconsin or something. Maybe see the colors or whatever. <laughs> no, no, I want to go to Vegas, Phil. All right, okay. And what a weird thing, Michael Jordan couldn't find him. Didn't come back. He didn't come back on time. Had to go get his ass out of bed. And I'm not going to say what's in his bed and where he was and blah blah blah. There's a knock on the door. It's Michael Jordan. That's Carmen Electra. <laughs> Who is it? Dave. Dave's not oh, here. <laughs> it's Carmen. <laughs> Who is it? And I hid. I, 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 didn't, I didn't want him to see me like that, so I, like, I'm just like hiding behind the couch with covers over me. Come on. You, we got to get to practice. Dennis came back and joined the team. And that's the way it went that year. Bill's voice sounds like my voice. I'm losing it. Yeah, that's the weirdest team in the history of teams. That is really weird. Um, I do have a favor out there. I don't know why we have so much stuff, but I don't have any video or photos of me, the band, well, four of us, my brother Michael, myself, and two of the leisure suits, singing the national anthem at the Bulls and the Celtics game into the playoffs. Anyone has any photo or any video. I know I have it. I just don't know where exactly it is. We sang the national anthem at that game, and Michael always tells the story that Jordan was smiling at him, and Larry Bird, <laughs> no, and, and Larry Bird gave him the thumbs up. This it just didn't happen. That's just Michael. He's delusional. It did not happen. It did not happen. Okay. Well, you know, you, you got to admire Michael for just thinking Saying it happened. It, yeah. I think he smiled at me. Jordan gave me the thumbs up. There you go. All right. Uh, and the other thing that keeps coming in regarding the last dance is the story about me buying the yellow suit from a Orlando Magic player named uh, Darren Armstrong, I believe. And uh, we said at one, on one show, and this is why it's great to talk with you folks. We said on one show, whatever happened to the yellow suit, the yellow suit that this guy was wearing at every playoff game, this yellow mustard suit, I bought it from him. I wore it to a game. I wore it to a game. I was seen, and recently even, and they were playing these NBA playoffs back, and there I am in this yellow suit sitting behind the bench, <laughs> and uh, Daryl Armstrong talking about it and everything like that. And then they said, well, what happened to the suit? And do you know what happened to the suit? No. We gave it to Jimmy Buffett. Right. I do remember yes. that. Yes. And right. Jimmy Buffett wore it on stage the next night at Poplar Creek. That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Here, wait, hold on. I think I have the chronological order of this. Okay. Okay. This is from uh, the great uh, Carol Harmon, the keeper of the castle for us, the diaries. JB, this uh, is dated, uh, JB Daryl Armstrong suit, 1996. Robin reads a story about the Orlando Magic player wearing the yellow suit at Sunday's game. JB calls Daryl Armstrong and asks him if he can buy the suit. Next hour, JB gets the suit. JB's at the hotel and goes to Armstrong's room to get the suit. <laughs> Next hour, Phil Jackson talks to Johnny B. 
listener calls in and asks him various, I love this, in caps, non-basketball questions, which is true. JB back with the suit. After returning with the suit, JB talks about going to tonight's game wearing it. And then the next two days, we yeah, J- the next night, Jimmy Buffett was in the studio and we gave him the suit to take with him. And he took it to his show at Poplar Creek. You know, uh, we spent a lot of time up in the, in the great city of Chicago. We've been around the Midwest here. And I knew it was going to be a strange day. Any day that you start your morning with Jonathan Brandemeyer for an hour, you know it's going to be weird. All I can say after spending an hour with Johnny B in the morning is sick minds think alike, you know? You know, uh, we spent a lot of time up in the, in the great city of Chicago. We've been around the Midwest here, and I knew it was going to be a strange day. Any day that you start your morning with Jonathan Brandemeyer for an hour, you know it's going to be weird. All I can say after spending an hour with Johnny B in the morning is sick minds think alike, you know? Oh, please, no, 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 more, more, yeah. more, no, no more. Now they make the movies in old black and white With happy endings where nobody fights If you find yourself in that nostalgic rage Honey, jump right up to show your age I wish I had a pencil-thin mustache Boston blacky kind Two-tone Ricky Ricardo jacket And an autographed picture of Andy Devine I remember being buck tooth and skinny Writing fan letters to the sky's knees Penny, oh, I wish I had a pencil-thin mustache I could solve some mysteries, too But then it's bandstand, Disneyland going up fast Drinking on a fake ID yeah, and Rama of the jungle was everyone's bawana When only jazz musicians were smoking marijuana Wish I had a pencil thin mustache I could solve some mysteries too That was back in the 60s, you know <clears throat> We'll send that out for Ike Turner, okay? <laughs> Flat top, dirty bop, cop in a field Grubbing on the living room floor So sore, yeah Send you off to college To gain a little knowledge All you want to do is learn How to score now But now I'm getting old I don't wear underwear I don't go to church And somebody stole my hair I can go to movies See it all there Way that it used to be Because I wish I had A pencil thin mustache Boston Blackie kind Two-tone Ricky Ricardo jacket And an autographed picture of Andy Devine I could be anyone I wanted to be Maybe Sway, Barrel Flint, or even Johnny B If I only had a pencil thin muster That'll get play, won't it? Yeah. I could do some cruising, too I say Brill Cream, a little dab I'll do you a can do some cruising too. Oh yeah. You know, uh, we spent a lot of time up in the in the great city of Chicago. We've been around the Midwest here, and I knew it was going to be a strange day. Any day that you start your morning with Jonathan Brandemeyer for an hour, you know it's going to be weird. You need to hear the history to see the future. Call the Johnny B voicemail eight three three Loon Line. 833-556-6546 for entertaining, not complaining. The Jonathan Brandmeier Showcast. This is the new Not Normal. This is Bob Costas. Jonathan Brandmeier is a man who'd have to move up a... St- it's actually several notches to get it exactly right. This is Bob Costas. Jonathan Brandmeier is a man who'd have to move up several notches in order to... Qual- I can't even read my own... Ro- I-, I can't even remember my own statements. It was just a spontaneous thing. It happened when it happened, and that's the end of it. All right, here we go. This is Bob Costas. Jonathan Brandmeier is a man who'd have to move up several notches in order to qualify as a fool. Yeah. 833 Loon Line is the voicemail. 833 Loon Line is the voicemail. 8335 JB Show is a direct line to a good time. 8335 JB Show. 833-552-7469. Direct line to a good time. Speaking up, Buzz, you all caught up on your viewing? 
all caught up on your binging? Well, I'll tell you, I'm caught up on my movies, though. I, 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 I'm three chapters into The Last Dance. Oh, good. And, I've, and I'm like eight, uh, eight episodes into The Tiger King. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah. Piper Piper and I can't stop watching it. See what I mean? <laughs> it, it, it's it, it's addicting. And I, I I I'm thinking to myself I like after watching that. Okay, did you just say something, Matt? Because you're not coming in clear at all. What are you saying? I said I felt sick to my stomach watching that show. It wasn't oh, when did you become Mr. Animal Lover? And I didn't see any animals getting harmed. Yeah, yet. no animals got harmed. Just put a couple of shotguns to the head. <laughs> Well, did you see the one part where uh, the dude who took over the zoo started beating on that lion? Yes. And everyone had to jump in and pull him off that? Mm-hmm. That, that, that right alone makes me sick. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. Okay. Don't fuck with lions. But is, hey, he, don't, yeah, he just said, don't fuck with lions, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, I started watching because everybody told me to watch it. Um, and then I was like, eh. I don't know. And then the, you know how it comes to That's why I love binging. I love things that run in order because then you go, well, let me see. Okay, let me see. What One the next, more. Right? One more. If you said come back next week, no. eh, it'd be a little bit harder for me yeah. to come back next week. But if I just keep sitting staring at the screen <laughs> and just, it keeps coming at you, I don't, I'm in. What the hell? There's nobody to root for on that show. They're all just awful people. There was, um, the, how about the lady, you know, she had her husband killed. What's her name again? <laughs> Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin. Did she kill her husband or did Absolutely. she kill Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I, I, no, there's no question. <laughs> there's no, I love how, and then the Tiger King, by the way, the Tiger King always has our hotline. So you never know when you pick it up, who is going to call. <laughs> it's funny. Every time we watch an episode, it starts, when it starts, I, I remind Piper that, uh, Joe Exotic has your phone yeah, number. Yeah, that would be to me the greatest thing that he just picks up the phone and calls. Okay, so now wait, wait a second. So the Tiger King, Tiger King. So this story was in the New York Times. Tiger King. What happened to Carol Baskin's husband, Don Lewis? Um, hmm. Buzz, what happened to her? You know, I, I, I. What happened to him? To him, excuse me. Yes. Yeah, I don't know how how he. Uh... He disappeared. Tiger King showed you how it happened. Uh, she fed him to the lions. Oh, right. Right. You're right. And then right. he's lying. He's in the lion's stomach right now. Right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> he's somewhere in there. Anyway, so it says here, if you can, uh, uh, net, uh, Netflix documentary is about a Florida sheriff, a flood of new theories in the unsolved disappearance. Only you can help solve the Jack Don Lewis cold case. Jack Don Lewis, last seen, 818, 1997, 81 years old. And it shows him holding a pair of um, a little uh, leopards. The Florida sheriff posted this notice on Twitter seeking new leads in the disappearance of Don Lewis. Way to get after it, pal. <laughs> 1997, way to move. You know what I think? I think we ought to get a... Figure out what happened to that guy. I mean, it'd be fantastic if they nailed her for it as a conclusion yeah, to the show. Yeah, it ends with Carol Baskin right. getting thrown into a lion's right. den. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don Lewis, the former husband of Big Cat Sanctuary owner, featured in the Netflix documentary Tiger King. Joe Exoticus. I, mean, I, I, I was. It's amazing to me that. The tigers and the lions are all used to get chicks. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I go to Vegas with tiger. a truckload of tigers. I saw a tiger. And, and once again, this is not Joe Exotic singing at all either. Did you know that? No, I did. Yeah, it's not him. This is guy it, guy from it's, Nashville. It's dubbed in. Yes. The Tiger oh, King on. sings way, way, way in the background somewhere. Maybe they didn't even turn his mic on. But this yeah. is not the Tiger King singing. But but when it, what about when he's alone and with his guitar and he starts singing? Oh, he might be singing there. I don't know. Because I I thought he was a good singer. Yeah, me too. But listen, I listen to this. I thought that was him. He's standing on the on the top of a car singing to right. a tiger. Right. right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I thought that was really good. I thought he'd get a career out of this if he ever got out of jail. Anyway, the sheriff's asking for leads. He puts a number here, too. Just let me see. 847. Oh, excuse me. Listen, listen, that's really a good... Okay, this is the weird part about this song. I find myself walking around the house all of a sudden, and the Tiger Song Man singing it. Yeah. 
Punk is a sign of a hit record. Yeah. It is the sign of a hit record. <laughs> sign of a hitman record. <laughs> I saw a tiger and the tiger saw a man. All half man, based on Joe Exotic. Elko this- County Sheriff's Office, dispatcher number five. This is a recorded line. How may I help you? Yeah, I was wondering, what is the uh, latest on uh, the uh, disappearance of Carol Baskin, Carol Baskin's husband? Uh, do you do we leave tips here, or do you have any information on that yet? Any more updates on that? I, there's, it says in dispatch, so no, we don't get any kind of updates on it, on the cases. So you're just the dispatcher there? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm, I'm curious, um, because can- I'm looking at the your sheriff there, uh, uh, gave a tweet, and he was asking for leads, and I was just kind of curious about it, uh, calling from NPR. So I want to know if there was any updates on it or not. And some, pe- some, I mean, if you, I'm going to excuse me, but I wanted to let you know some people have called us and uh, given us some tips that I think might be valuable. I'm not sure of it or not. Gotcha. Um, I mean, if you have tips, I can submit them into our. Um, our tip hotline and it gets it goes to the detectives that are working that case obviously there's been many many people calling in about this so we have to kind of control the inflow of information so their phones aren't ringing off the hook sure sure Uh, yeah well most of the people are saying that uh, carol baskin fed her husband to the lions right yeah and off of what was on the the netflix special oh that was on the show itself right yeah, that's the claim that they were making on Netflix. Hmm. So if you had a guess, yep. would you say that's the the theory that's coming in from most phone calls to your sheriff's department right now regarding the, the Lion King? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody keeps calling because that's what was, um, that was the allegation that was brought up in the show. Yeah. So. So see, I get it. So what's happening here, and we're getting the same calls, and I hate to bother you with this, that the sheriff's department. So anyway, basically what I'm hearing then is most people are watching the Netflix show, The Tiger King, then they're calling in because you posted, you know, you need help finding where this, uh, if they know anything about the disappearance of Jack Don Lewis, Carol Baskin's husband, then you put the number there, and most people, I want to be clear, then are saying, hey, I bet you that to she killed him and fed him to the lions. Yes. That's the theory. And there's nothing else that's, that's the majority of calls come in just because they're watching the show. They stop the show on Netflix. Then they give your sheriff's department a call and they tell you what you knew already, that that's what the theory was, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's craziness. Okay. So <laughs> if you had to make a theory based on the calls you had, what would you say? Um, I am, Honestly, I'm not at liberty to give my opinions um, on this line, but um, you know everything that people have been calling about, the whole purpose of the sheriff putting out that request was to see if anybody you know was maybe potentially personally aware of of Don if they had any more you know intimate knowledge of him. Um, so that was the the purpose of the information being put. Out, back out there that maybe a cold case could be solved with it all bringing back up again but right uh, well what a, you must get a lot of crazy calls i'm sorry to bother you with this but uh maybe they'll find the killer somewhere uh, you know it's been a long time it's been 1997 since they were looking for him it seems odd they haven't found anything that could lead it back to anyone who was uh, responsible for that dis- disappearance mm-hmm. seems weird yeah, there's always the, the possibility that he could have just just left Yes, but I was going to say yeah. that. That's very much a possibility, isn't it? We don't even know. No remains have been found. No body parts have been found. Nobody has opened up a tiger or a lion to look inside of it. No, it's he could very well be gone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, he on his own. But th- this is just my personal opinion. I don't mean to get rude. But if I were married to Carol Baskin, I'd been gone a long time ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, don't you? Yeah, it's definitely an interesting life that they were leading. There's no question, but I would have been out. So I'm thinking maybe that theory is the one I would follow all the way to the bank. That's the one right there. Listen, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a good day. You too.
that's it. There's the theory right there. You're living. Think about it. It's right. You think about it. It's right in front of your face. It's right in front of your face. Carol Baskin. You're living with Carol Baskin in the Tiger King, and you're Don Lewis. You run for the hills. That's it. There is no other answer. That's the answer. We've solved it. <laughs> you know that everyone's just watching the show, right, in Florida or wherever they are in the world. Yeah, I just saw the show. I know what, what happened. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, Carol Baskin, fed her husband to the lion. Oh, thank you, sir. We'll take, we'll take that down. Uh, uh, and a third person. Some third person has to know that. There's a, there's a witness. There's, yeah. I mean, you don't do something like that all by yourself. No. You, so. I don't know. I could easily dispose of someone with a whole lion farm. <laughs> I'm serious. How hard would it be? Hey, honey, like, let's say I'm going to take the old lady out for a walk. Let's go out for a walk. Look at the lions. It's beautiful, nice, moonlit night walk in. Uh-huh. She slips in the cage. But by the way, I put Gainsburger in her pantyhose. <laughs> I, I don't even know if they still have Gainsburger. Do they still have, do they still have Gainsburger? I'm sure they do. Yeah, this is Uncle Joe. They've got it. There's no question about it. I got some in my pants right now. (laughs) Yeah, how can you not sing to it? Hotline ringing. I don't know who it is this time. Hope hope it's not the Sheriff's Department. Hello. Hello, Fabio Viviani. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey Fabio, you've been watching. You've been watching the Tiger King. You know, man, uh, it, I haven't. It's like uh, it's like secondhand smoke. I don't want to smoke, but everybody around me does it, so I get mm-hmm. bits and pieces of it. Isn't that weird, right? Everybody, I was, I was talking to Buzz about it. We just called the sheriff's department in Florida to tell him who killed people. But listen, you're right. It's one of those things where you get sucked into it because everyone makes you feel bad because you didn't watch it. Yeah, which I honestly, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like when everybody peer pressured me in the 90s to do drugs and I still said no, yeah. I'm okay with it. <laughs> I guess I guess I'm not the cool kids, but I can't live without the, 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 the whatever king and tiger king. Tiger king. I, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Let me ask you, Fabio Vibiani, have you ever uh, cooked a tiger? Never cooked a tiger. Ever taste one? I find it. Uh... I don't know if I would. It would be like testing a cat. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I probably not. I mean, look, if I'm hungry and I'm about to die of starvation, yeah. shit, I'll eat you. Why not? But, <laughs> uh, you know, if I have option on the table, I probably give it. I give most animal a pass. Yeah, but think about it. When we think about our food, we okay. You look at a cow. Would you go, "Wow, a cow that looks so good to eat"? Nobody would say that. So what's the point? What's the difference? If it would be a tiger or a, actually, tigers are prettier. Well, I guess you know there is countries in the world that that's exactly their motto. If he walks, crawl, or fly, fuck it, I'll eat it. Yeah, that's but, exactly right. You know, I don't know, man. I think we're spoiled from a food perspective. But I guess you're right. I mean, I'm looking at it, it shouldn't be a difference. But actually. Tigers are pretty. It should be like, hmm, that's probably more tasty than a cow. Cow looks like kind of goofy. Right. But And you know, the, the tiger, you always see cows. They're in their own crap. They're walking around. I, I To me, if I had a choice, I'd eat in this order of animals. I'd eat a tiger. I'd eat a lion. A black puma would be awesome because they look so cool. Black, black puma. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a puma. Aren't they? What well, do you call it? Sure, I'm pretty sure I can definitely cook most of it. You know, funny story. I went to the aquarium, the shed aquarium, with my wife and my child, which is four now, uh, not long ago. And we're walking around, and, and my son is like, look at these. Look at that. All the fishes. And I'm thinking about it. Shit, I cooked 97% of this aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like, I don't want to be here, buddy. Because all right, but whatever, you know? Yeah, man. Oh, man. I mean, I don't know. I guess you could cook anything. Well, you're the cook, Fabio. You're the chef. You you could cook anything if you season it right, couldn't you? It didn't what Julia Child used to say, just put butter on something that tastes good. <laughs> right? But I guess, you know, she also dropped chicken on the floor, forget it for about 15 minutes, and then still serve it. So. Oh, well, we're, going, we're oh. breaking bad on Julia Child now, right out of the box. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Fabio, okay. Fabio Viviani. Fabio Viviani. Are you guys? Listen to this Captain song, man. 
Abbas Fabio Viviani You make a great sauce Fabio He dines El Fresco And on each arm The Putanesco what? Remember that song? That, that yeah. is a fan- I miss that, man. You should literally give me that, so- that sound bite, and yeah. I will literally put it on the front of everything I've ever do video on social media, online, anywhere. And okay. I'll give you credit for it. Hold on one second. Hold on. I'm going to write it down because I'm going to send it to you. Send. I'm going to say, and explain to Buzz, by the way, Putinesca. Explain that to him. Cause that, isn't there a pasta, a Fabio, after named after Putinesca? Putinesca pasta? Am I wrong so, on that? Um, it's, a, it's a little bit rated uh, explanation. Yeah, it's so, okay. It, there, is a, there is a tale that uh, pretty much says that in the, you know, several, many years ago, and, but a hundred years ago in the 18th century, uh, men were out there working long hour. And if the women weren't working something like normal job, like, you know, office job or, or working in some, uh, building or stuff, they were still working, um, entertaining other men at home while their main uh, guy was gone. That, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a tale about the story of the Putanesca. And, and because the man was hungry, still expected a hot meal at night. And so the wife was whipping up something really quick that tasted delicious, very last minute. Uh, with olive, onion, a little chili flakes, like very good layer of flavor, but also extremely quick to do because, again, she was busy during the day doing other things. Mm-hmm. And, 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 the, and, and the, the, the war to define that kind of behavior in Italy, you know, cheating on a husband or if you're female, cheating on a husband is called putana. And, and putana is kind of a, 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 it's kind of a fun, women that entertain funny business. And puttanesca is the sauce that comes from this lady. Now, not many people in Italy, yeah. many people in Italy uh, know the story behind the, 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 the beginning of the name. And, you know, clearly not people that cook are defining the category by all means. You know, my mom does puttanesca every Sunday, and I promise you my dad is a home all day. So, yeah, that's right. Like, but it's a, but it's a fun it's a funny story and it's a delicious dish it really the, is yeah and if you made it what do you well I don't, you don't need to give me the recipe right now but you can find that on probably one any one of your million Fabio Viviani books you can find it on one of your many yeah, uh, so for YouTube's on Putanesca Instagram at Fabio Putanesca. Viviani yes go ahead I was giving you some nice plugs yeah, and Putanesca. Instagram at Fabio Viviani Top Chef winner season five all stars life after Top Chef the one the only um, uh, but Putinesca is it a simple recipe or is it a tough one. It's a very simple, actually. It, 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 I can give it to you in 30 seconds. Go. Putanesca is just a cup of chopped olives, uh, a cup of uh, julienne red onion, some chili flakes, and some capers. Parsley, you cook everything together with a little bit of olive oil, and you add the three cups of tomato sauce. It's, it's pretty much an enhanced tomato sauce. Buzz, did you write that down? Uh, you know, I tried to remember because I love tomato sauce. Okay, go ahead, Fabio, one uh, more time. Here's Fabio Viviani with one his recipe for puttanesca. It's red onion, green olives, capers, a bunch of parsley. Cook everything together with olive oil and then add the tomato sauce to it. That's it. It's done. There it is. The recipes of Fabio, available now. And don't forget, from yeah. now on, you're going to be hearing this song whenever you punch into Instagram at Fabio Viviani. Fabio Viviani, Cafe Valenza Boss. Fabio Viviani. Wait a minute, what is the first sentence he says? Fabio Viviani, what is the first sentence he utters in that uh, particular song? I, you, I, I don't understand. Hold on one second. Let's hear, let's hear, let's break these lyrics down for a second. Fabio Buzz. Capital what? I know I heard my name. Buzz, he said what? Buzz. <laughs> I, I I don't know what he's saying. Hold on, let's keep going. I don't know. I don't know what he's saying. But it doesn't. It is, I know what you're saying though, Fabio. It's so excitingly beautiful. It doesn't really matter what he's singing. Hold on. Fabio Viviani, you make a great 
sauce. Got that? You make a great sauce? Yeah. Fabio, he dines al fresco. <laughs> and on dines each arm, the puttanesco. <laughs> that, that's so good. There it is. That, that, that is like Vinny Argento, Italian dude who did that. I'm looking, trying to figure this out. That's Vince Argento. Uh, and he did that song for you and one of your many appearances here on the show. And uh, I love the quote that says, Fabio was warm, gracious, and so charming, he could probably get away with punching babies. I think that's pretty much uh, the way <laughs> I look at it. Who said that? Now, I don't know. Somebody in uh, one of the Crane Chicago business stories or something like that. He's warm, gracious, and so charming, he could probably get away with punching babies. <laughs> I don't punch. I don't punch babies. No, though. of course I mean, not. We're clear well, on you that. You could if you wanted. Yeah, if you wanted to, you could get away. With it. <laughs> hey, Fabio Viviani just punched my kid. Oh, that's oh, never mind. That's cool. It's all right, Fabio. Did it. Pray, the mom is going to be. I like, probably did something wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. my dad used to hit me and say, "I say what you hit me for." He goes, "You'll do something." <laughs> hey, why right. are you walking around the kitchen right now? Why are you walking around? Get in the phone. You're walking around the kitchen or something. No, I'm on, no, I'm on the phone. I'm sitting in my office at no, the desk. I'm not re- doing it. Really? Just sitting there. Let yeah. me ask you a question. Speaking of kids, don't you have, you have, as you say, little kids are there at home and everyone is at home with you, right? Yeah, everybody's at home with me. And I tell you, man, we got to get back to work. Boy, oh, this, boy. This, this thing is over. We got to get back to work. Oh, man. It just I just want to get out of the house. I want to go somewhere. You know, I'm broadcasting from my house. Buzz is in his house. And it's uh, it's so weird, but... I want to get back to work. Otherwise, there's not going to be a house to sit at it. You know, we got to get back to work. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that because you have a lot of restaurants. And the restaurant business, I'm starting to see, you know, they're starting to ease into it in some states. What is your situation like right now, Fabio, with the restaurants you have... What what is it? What do you employees? What what is it like? So right now we have over forty restaurants, uh, half dozen of hotel, and a dozen of event uh, spaces throughout the nation, mm-hmm. and ninety percent of it is shut down. I mean, in Chicago, uh, we are serving uh, curbside and takeout from Siena Tavern. We do like pizza nights. We do a bunch of fun things for people to take home. You know, we are about to reopen Prime and Provision. Uh, for curbside, but again, they put shelter in place until May 30th, so there is not a lot of options for us. People won't go out anyway. In other states, Florida, we're reopening next week, limited seating. The biggest issue here is that what, who's making the, the law and who's trying to help this business, literally, and I'm going to say this with all the due respect, they never had a business. So they, they are putting measure, you know, helping things in place that helps very little. You know, the biggest issue is not the fact that we're closed right now, aside from all the unemployed people, which is a big issue. But the major issue for the business itself is not right now, it's when we reopen. Because now, yeah, you know, we're going to have 25% capacity, 50% capacity, but we still carry 100% of the bill. Right. 100% of the rent, 100% of the overhead. So, you know, the, the unfortunate part is that politics should do politics and, and business people should run their business. Yeah, I mean, so even you're, you're, you, you, but you said it though, Fabio. You don't know who. Nobody knows who to believe anymore. You know what I mean? It's a lot of information out there, and there is, and there is a lot of believable things on both sides. On both the side that says you should stay put because this shit's scary, and on the side of what the fuck are you doing? Get up and run because right. these things will never go away. It's just another flu. It's being just overblown by the media. There is both. Uh, both theory on both sides of the island, and they're both very credible. Both a lot of high and then luminaires in both medical and science field confirming both theory, right? Yeah. And, and I think that naturally, people, you know, your brain is not made to make you thrive and take chances. Your brain is wired to protect you. So naturally, people tend to believe the things that will hurt them the most. You know, like people, they're sick, you know, you know it's a pessimistic kind of uh, view of the world. But again, I'm not discounting the, the credibility of the virus or I'm not discounting the, the fact that we should prevent, you know, uh, the, the spread. And, and, you know, elderly and people with immune system compromise should really be careful. 
but I think they should be as careful as on a seasonal flu. And, you know, and, and I don't know, man, I just, I don't know how to put 200 million American in, in this kind of financial uh, hardship is going to help anything, including the, the healthcare system. And I, I just don't know, man. It just, it's very, very bizarre. It is. And, and let's not forget, let's not forget that the Pentagon just released that UFOs are real. Yeah. I mean, shit, May's going to be released. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, you know, of all the times, with all of this going on, I mean, everything, everything's shit. happening, the world's going to hell, the economy's going to hell, the, you, everything's going to shit, and here we go. Hey, by the way, there's uh, we just uh, releasing some but, videos of this show. The way, there are UFOs. Yeah, me, my May and June, bro, is going to be lit. Like, talking about a party here. <laughs> People, I think we're on our way out. I don't know what's happening in the world, but it ain't right. You got UFOs flying around. You got restaurants closing down. Go back to the restaurants for one second, because Fabio, that's your world for a second. But, you, okay, let's say they open it up and they say, yeah, everybody can go. Now you're still going to have to, they, they, you know, they keep saying the new normal, the new normal, whatever it is. Now you're still going to have to adjust seating, which I like, because I hate the set tees. I hate sitting next to people. I don't like it. So to me... That's the only thing I like about the whole situation. How are you going to allow, as I heard some restaurants, 25% capacity? How are you going to ever get your money back? Well, you don't. Uh, you're just trying to survive. I do believe that there is going to be a period in which everything will be back close to normality. Because, look, i am only been in the United States for about 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. When I first came to this country, the first thing I said is that, man, what a country. I mean... Literally, in, it was like 2005. I'm like, this country is so freaking ahead of everything else I've ever seen. In 2020, there's going to be car flying. And instead, in 2020, we got to teach people how to wash their damn hands. So for <laughs> me, it's like, wait a second. Like, yeah. What the fuck is going on yeah, here? Right? Yeah, yeah like, I agree. I agree, Wait man. a second. Well, so I think that, that uh, I always say never send a good crisis to waste. Meaning there is big lesson on both financial, personal, uh, social that needs to be adapted and yeah. adjusted. There is not all come, not everything is bad, but because there is behavior that are to be put in place. And there's things that I have learned about the way I manage myself, the way I manage myself, uh, my family, my finances, my business. You know, I think everybody's going to have a lot more conservative approach after these on, on a kind of an outlook on life and be a little bit more ready for things to come. So I don't think that's a bad thing. What I think is a bad thing is that, you know, now, you know, we, we put a whole business model on the ability to serve the 100% of our customer. And, and I do not agree with people that says, oh, just don't pay rent. Yeah, well, shit, I'm a landlord too. Yeah. You know, the landlord needs to pay the bill as much as I do. Right. So I don't think it's fair to take money from who you think has more than you just to feed your benefit, you know? Yeah. I think that this is literally a government issue right now, and uh, and you have to literally work like, you know, 2009, the banking industry screwed the housing market by giving loans, subpar loan to people that should never have a loan in first place because they have no ability to pay back. Right now, honestly, we should bail out insurance company. And I need to be, and I need to be to go to my insurance and say, hey guys, guess what? I've been paying hundreds of thousands of dollars every year to be covered against the business interruption. Well, well, shit, here we go. Business interruption. You need to pay me now. You owe me yeah. $2 million, $3 million, That's $5 right. million. And then if the, comp the insurance company is going to go out of business or is at risk to go out of business, then you bail them out like you did with the banking in 2009. Yeah, I, I mean, looked at I looked at the same thing, Bobby. I looked at the same like the life insurance, life insurance, and insurance here and insurance there. And people are saying you don't have to pay. You don't. You know what? Guess what? I guarantee you, if I stopped paying, my insurance would lapse. It would go down the tubes. So you know you got to pay, and there's no way around it. But guess what? What if you can't pay? Oh. Hey, what's that noise yeah. in the background? No, let me find out. <laughs> Somebody's singing in the background. But yes, but what do you do, Fabio? I mean, seriously, what do you do? Because it's, it's like a domino so, effect. So for us, you know, we're good tenants in, in most of our property. We're, we're anchor tenants. So fortunate enough, whether it's a combination of business, wisdom, 
uh, know how to structure certain deal, whatever, we are going to be able to negotiate some terms with our lender. We're, we're very fortunate in, in the in the real estate market because we work with great people and great company. Right. But what I would suggest for anybody that doesn't know how to navigate through contract obligation and stuff is to have a legitimate conversation with the landlord and say, hey, guys, look, my intention is to pay you fully, but maybe for the next year, let's do a percentage rent. So if I only make 25% of my sales, I'll pay you 25% of my rent. There is few that is clearly a disadvantage on it because the landlord is not going to get the full rent. But the advantage is that first, you're going to have to turn a tenant, which will cost you more money than get less rent for a, for a time frame. And then who the hell are you going to put there? A good restaurant go out of business. You think there's going to be a lot of people right now taking leases, full prices, yeah. not renegotiating and beating landlord up on the head? Nope. No. no. If you're a landlord right now, keep your tenant happy, forego a good chunk of the rent, tackle the extra money at the end of the lease. So let's just say that, you know, out of a 12 month, I pay you 25% every month. Now, 75% left that I should pay you, it's another, what, 10 months, nine months? Great. Add another, you know, nine months of lease at the end of the, at the end of the lease time. I don't know, but the, people got to get creative, right? And, and I have created what I've created today in business because I've always been very creative. We're hurting. We're not going to die. Yeah. We bend, we're not going to break, you know? Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not the scenario for a lot of people out there. To the point that actually, in the next 30 days, I will make available the full extent of Fabio Viviani Hospitality, which is my hospitality consulting business, yeah. for free for 90 days to anyone that need help navigating the thing. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. What's the know, Fabio Consulting? What is it? What's the, what's the title of this uh, operation? So, my co- so my company is called Fabio Viviani Hospitality. Got Fabio it. Viviani Hospitality is a, is a hospitality business. We're a hospitality developer. Right. One vertical, one vertical of our business is business consulting for other restaurants, hotel, and food service businesses. Right. Fairly successful until you know two months ago, we had a lot of clients. Yep. What we're going to do, we're going to put our services, our expertise, our consulting, our thought process, our time to help the industry for 90 days at no cost to anyone. Well, wait a minute. You're so saying the industry, Fabio, Fabio, you're saying the industry, like anybody from a restaurant anywhere in the world that's listening here, is it, they say, hey, Fabio, I got a restaurant in uh, Palm Beach, Florida. Can, I, uh, can you help me out? Yeah. No, yes. No kidding. I can help you out with your lead. We can help you out with your lease negotiation. We can help you out from a PNL perspective. We can help you out from marketing perspective. It's PNL. We can help you out from social media. We can, yeah, we can help. Buzz has a question. Navigate. Buzz, what is your question for Fabio? What's, P, what's PNL? Profit and losses. It's oh. a, a, <laughs> okay. It's we, a, we only know the losses part. <laughs> Really, but, but, that you do every month to figure out the health of your business. But Fabio, you know what you said though earlier. It makes sense because you know what you, if you say to the, your landlord, you say, "Listen, let's back that lease down a bit. You're going to get your money if I make whatever percentage. You'll get the percentage. I get it. But guess what? Right. They don't have a leg to stand on, as you say. They, what, who's going to move in? Who's going to take over for if Fabio? If you move your restaurant, if you move Bar Siena or Siena Tavern right. or right. Prime Envision, who is going to move right. into those restaurants to take over now? Nobody. Right, right. Yeah, so, that makes perfect sense. But again, you have to you have to always negotiate from a place of good intent, not from a place of strength. I will never go to one of my landlords and say, "Yo, guess what? Tough shit." <laughs> oh, you're yeah. No, I know. <laughs> that's not, I know that's not how you work. It never works in a negotiation like that. You got to know what both sides want. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you go to him as a nice guy that you are, and you say, "Listen, let's kind of right, let's work this out." Look. Correct. And that's the only way to do business. You know, yeah. sometimes there are scenarios in life when you can arm strong your way through things. I think that because in this moment, everybody hurt, you know, I got a guy reaching out to me, which I'm not going to mention who, uh, it's another chef that I respect. And I think is doing a fantastic job from a food creation perspective. He called at me and he's asking me some questions. And then he goes like, well, fuck, I didn't pay a landlord a dime. You know, I'm the biggest things in this town, and if I go away, he's screwed. Yeah. So fuck him. Yeah. 
I don't think it's a good way to go about it. No. You know, I, I think that you need to make partnership, not em- enemy. So what I told my landlord is that, hey, I appreciate the help. I'm committed to pay as much as I possibly could. And I hope you understand the scenario. And let's make sure that in the long term, over a 10-year period, because if you look at a lease on a, on a six-month period, then you're screwed. But if you look at a 10-year period, there is a lot of way to work with your tenant, with your landlord, with your business partner. You know, this is not somebody got up in the morning and decided to, oh, fuck it, guys. I'm not paying anybody anymore. This shit's everywhere right now. I yeah. mean, the whole world is out of hope. So there is going to be, I mean, fucking bank for giving loan. Think about how bad is it? Did you ever hear about a bank that doesn't want his money back for a while? <laughs> <laughs> Fabio is riled up. <laughs> no. I'm, no, I'm telling you, man, it's, it is a weird, is it world banks that you are, I'm telling you, man, banks are known to give you an umbrella in good weather and take it away from you the minute it starts raining. <laughs> <laughs> but, right now, but right now, banks are playing nice because they understand. I have a lot of friends into banking, people that also own bank. And they said, what are we going to do? What am I going to lose? 80% of my customer because I chase them with a stick when they have no money? Let them help me. You know, it, it's the whole, we're all in this together. That's why, you know, I never get to the politics end. I have both friends on both sides of the island. Yeah. Some of my business partners are very conservative. Some of my business partners are Democrats. Some yeah. they're liberal. And, 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 and you know what? This is not the time for politics. This is the time that America needs to sit down, shut up, Put up, stand up, and work. Yes, and F- work yeah. together and figure it out how we move ahead. That's right on, Fabio you know? Viviani. Right on, brother. Now I would do all of that you said, except Bill Gates put a chip in my head. Now, <laughs> um, I will tell you this. No, no, I'm just hold on a minute because I want to. No. I want to go back I, to because you're from Florence. I, work. I know you're from Florence, Italy. It, you came here to America. Have you? Are, and Italy is one of the hardest hits ever. What about your family? Are they in Italy right now? Yeah, everybody's in Italy right now. And again, Italy, there's a lot of mixed match information coming out of Italy. You know, those all those death counts, you know, the United States and Italy is one of the few countries that get paid a premium from insurance company and government if there is death by COVID-19. So do we believe the 100% of the number that come out? I don't know, man. It's a lot of questioning out yeah, there. That's why right. I don't get into it because it's not my place to do so. But I have my family member, you know, my mother, sister, she's a, a primary nurse in one of the top uh, ER center in Florence. She said, yeah, it's bad, but it's bad because they're, they're asking us to have healthy people that show mild to no flu condition to sit in the hospital for two, three weeks. And that's why we're all jam packed. If everybody that in a normal scenario didn't need to be here would have just stayed at fucking home, it would have been completely fine. You know, she's like, it's very odd. Though. You know, they changed right. the way that we classified death, reason, and causes. You know, people die of a heart attack, like because they're in their 90s and they have a heart condition for the last 10 years. But if at the moment of death they got the test positive, then the COVID death related, which has nothing to do with the reason why the person died, but they still get, it's freaking weird. Man. Yeah, you it's could really talk weird. about this to your blue in the face, all the conspiracy theories that are out there, but really at the bottom, of, at the end of the day, it's about the people like you, people who have jobs, people who are trying to keep their businesses afloat. That's what it's about right now. And I don't see you guys opening normally in a restaurant world, but you, I want to make sure of one thing. You said you had a consulting service that you will help restaurants anywhere in the world, in the country, wherever it is, uh, get through this and navigate through this craziness. What is the plug? Where do they find you on that? Well, FabioViviani.com is my website, but anyone that needs business help related to restaurants right now, whether it's a consulting, whether it's an app, a head to bounce idea off, whether it's anything that we can help, free social media, uh, helping with marketing idea, HR. I have a whole HR department on standby. There's going to be a lot of HR issues. They can send me an email at info at fabioviviani.com, and then I will guide people through the right channel to talk to the right people in my organization. And again, this is a no charge for anybody. You know, I figured it out a lot of friends. And a lot of people, even with small businesses, they have no wall to bang their head on it right now. 
because they have no one that can lead them to a better solution and a better outcome. We're going we're gonna to put up literally the 100% of our resources for free. Again, there is no charge on this. We're just putting good out there All right. to be able to help people that are going through some business hardship and need an objective and knowledgeable point of view on how to navigate the next 12 months. People who have no wall to bang a head on. <laughs> That's just yeah. Fabio right there. Fabio, let's, uh, let's end on a positive. My brother, Michael, I don't know if you ever met Michael. We've been to many of your places together. Michael, you ever meet Fabio? I don't think I did, Fabio. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, buddy. This is my brother, Michael. Now, the reason he's on is because he uh, wrote a song with the Pope. With the Pope. <laughs> Think about this now. Hold on a second. And it's uh, it, Michael, tell him this. And this song is called See You Soon. This song, Fabio, just had yeah. one million views on Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, YouTube. See You Soon, Michael Brandbeier. And written, it says, yeah. Michael, it says literally written, Michael Brandmeier and Pope Francis. Tell Fabio about it real quick before he has to take off. Uh, Fabio, you cooked a cake for the Pope. I just read. Yeah. I was, Is that true? I was five. I was five years old, and my grandma, my, my grandfather was connected to the to the Vatican somehow, somewhere. I didn't ask because, you know, let's not go there. But he was connected. <laughs> we got a private uh, uh, mess. We got a private mess and a, and a you know blessing, holy water blessing, the whole thing from the Pope. And I I brought him a cake and and a few other things that happened, but yeah. But wait, wait, yeah. wait a minute. I Now this makes sense. I, I know why you're avoiding it. Didn't you try to pull his hat off? Well, he, I, was a ba I was a kid, and I had a baseball hat, and he pulled my hat down saying something on the line, oh, look how cute this kid is, and I jumped and I knocked his head off. <laughs> <laughs> I knocked his... Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. I fuck I know. Who's this guy? I mean, yeah. who, <laughs> who's so the I guy just, with the I big went, white hat? I jumped and I knocked. The, you know the ceremonial hat? Yeah. The pope, the the hat off of the pope's head. Think about that. <laughs> Fabio knocked the hat off of a pope. Nobody got a picture of that. No footage of that. Anything? No, no picture were allowed or anything. But that's a great story that my mom tells literally everyone. Hey. You meet my mom. She was like, pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Renza. Do you know that my son, when he was five, <laughs> that loser. That's a good story, man. You, <laughs> and you can literally say you knocked the Pope's hat off. Hey, guys, I apologize. I, know, I have, Fab uh, Fabio, I, uh, I know you got to go to a conference call. Hey, Fabio. Nice to meet you. Fabio. Nice to meeting you guys. Thank you very much. But he told me he told me he had to go to a conference call, so he just hung up. But he was, man, I got to tell you something. Buzz, he was riled up, man. Yeah, he was. He was riled up. And, and, and quite honestly, Michael, it, you're it, still it, on. Just get in the phone when we're talking to you, though. Go ahead, Buzz. It's a thrill yeah, to yeah. hear somebody uh, a, 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 a drop obscenities the way yeah. he does in that language, and it's so musical. It's, it's musical. <laughs> you know, if you swear in, in, swear in Italian, like normally, if you swear in Italian, it sounds it sounds good. Listen to this for a second. Go spit on your aunt. See what I mean? <laughs> All right. See, but it sounds like you're saying something really nice. Go spit on your aunt. Yeah. Doesn't that sound great? Go spit on your aunt. Who says something like that? But then, I'm looking at the lyrics, though, of, this, of the uh, Pope's speech that inspired you, Michael. And yes, Joey, my brother yeah. Joey, did the video. Michael wrote the song, A Million yeah. Views. See you soon. And um, yeah. he Does says... Does have any oh, financial uh, backlash? Yeah, do you get uh, any money? For, does the Pope want to cut of this? Well, I contacted the, the Archbishop in Chicago, and I contacted the Archbishop in Milwaukee, and then I sent a couple things on Facebook just trying to see if they'd even see it, and then I haven't heard back. So, yeah, you're right. It's like getting, you can't, it's like getting contacted God. That so, is, yeah, is, by the way, it's as close to contacting God as you're going to get <laughs> in the Catholic faith, right? <laughs> So to me, you you but see, I wouldn't even have reached out. I would wait for the Pope to come to me. I wouldn't reach out to the Pope and say, "Hey, I saw your speech on the balcony there. I wrote a song for it. It's got a million views. I'm not making any money on it, but uh, hey, can I ask yeah, you one yeah. other thing, Pope? I don't like the shopping together line. Nope, <laughs> nobody really shops together. <laughs> just me. When we're shopping together, <laughs> this is my take on it. Okay, now, so let me, let me, we will end with the song. So you got the song, A Million Views, but that is a good question. When you have a song like that and you enjoy putting this together, 
there's no real financial gain here. It's just sort of like it's out there, and and uh, our mother would be very happy that it's floating around in heaven. And uh, that's but that about. That was the that was the whole that was the whole intention. Um, it was just to, during this time to get a good vibe out there, and not want to want not want to get anything back. That was the total full intention. So, boy, if you could okay. just get you know fifty cents for each uh, <laughs> See, hit, that would be five hundred thousand dollars. Hear that? You need buzz, you need buzz as a manager. You enjoy her. You take a, you take a million hits and you're going nowhere with it. A million hits. We get messages from a lady in Rome saying saying I couldn't get out of bed till I saw the video and then I got reason to get out of bed. So we're getting the heart payment, not the fifty thousand. Buzz, the see, they're payment. getting the heart. They're getting payment all over of the, the heart. World. Yeah, payment of the heart. For, yeah, that's it. Fifty cents. Everybody's got it. That's all I'm saying. And then, <laughs> Just a donation, fifty you, cent you, you donation. Glad you, glad we could help you. How about fifty cents? Okay, wait. Where does it go? How do you donate fifty cents to somebody? If Michael wanted to take a a, a fifty cent hit from everyone who watched it, where, yeah, do, where does they send fifty cents? I, I, I can't plan out all the business uh, <laughs> models. That you, yeah. I'm just giving you the concept, the broad stroke. Okay, fifty cents for a yeah. million views. Five hundred thousand dollars, and then we divide that up. I don't See? know. There's got to be some way you can make money on this because this is the moment. You know, you've been writing songs. This is the moment you're breaking through. Every oh oh, and Jimmy Kimmel tweeted it out too. Jimmy Kimmel liked it, yeah. man. That's awesome. Jimmy Kimmel, what a good guy. Yeah, yeah what, what a great dude, man. Uh, I like what you told me. He said, <laughs> you told "Yeah." Me said so about- I sent a note to Jimmy, and I don't have the, the email in front of me, but I I sent a note to Jimmy I, Kimmel. I remember what you said. Okay, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I sent a note to, so, to Jimmy and I said, hey, this is my brother's video. Take a look at it. You might like it. I know, you know, Catholic, whatever it is. And uh, he goes, I like it. Go ahead, read what it said. He, I, I, he just said, I've been wondering when your brothers would get off their asses and write a song with the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering when your brothers would get off their asses and write a song with the Pope. Jimmy Kimmel. Awesome, man. All right, I'll play the song here in a second. As we get out of here, I'll play the song in a second. Hold on one second. This is Fabio Viviani of Top Chef. I spend my days driving women wild by cooking and speaking Italian. I'm like the opposite of Jonathan Brandmeier. <laughs> All right, thank you, <laughs> Fabio. Mr. Sexy. I make the best omelet. Yeah. And I would love to make you an omelet for the rest of your life. <laughs> okay, every day. great. I don't want your omelet. I make the best omelet. I know omelet, you just told me that. And I would love to make you an omelet for the rest of your life. All right. Every Thank you very much. Oh, my God. All right, this is Michael Song. Joey did the video. Check it out. It's See You Soon, uh, based on the Pope speech written by Thanks, Michael, Thanks, and, Michael and the Pope. I like that. It's a good movie title, too. Tonight, before falling asleep, think about when we will return to the street. Tonight, before falling asleep, think about when we can hug again and hang in with our friends. And when doing all the little things we used to, we'll feel like an unexpected and beautiful gift. Tonight, before falling asleep, think about the coffee in the cafes, the small talk and the sashay. Tonight, before falling asleep, think about when doing whatever, like shopping together, will seem like a party. And when all the little things we used to do Will feel like an unexpected and beautiful gift Yeah, I'll see you soon I'll see you soon
second will become precious Like swims in the sea and sunsets And laughing together and welcoming guests into our homes The life we know It's the night before falling asleep Think about when this will be Just a memory Strength and courage to you And I'll see you soon That'll do it for this edition of the Jonathan Brandmeier Showcast. Listen to Johnny B streaming and get Showcast episodes on demand at brandmeiershow.com. You can also get Brandmeier on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and just about anywhere podcasts can be found. Be sure to subscribe, and if you like what you hear, leave a five-star review. Follow us for news, updates, links to the latest episodes, and more at brandmeyershow.com and facebook.com slash brandmeyershow. Leave Johnny B. a voicemail at 833-LOONLINE. That's 833-566-6546. The Loon Line's open 24 hours a day for entertaining, not complaining. I'm Jimmy Mack. Hey, if you're into Star Wars, check out my show, Rebel Force Radio, featuring Star Wars news, commentary, and celebrity interviews at rebelforceradio.com. Thanks for listening to the Jonathan Brammeyer Showcast, in the air, everywhere. Click.